console ever. Uh, yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Um, I'll reach out, or she can reach out, or, or, or whatever is necessary. Hey, absolutely. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, I don't have, uh, specifically... I spe specifically like doing doing these, right? I really enjoy them. But uh, the problem is, is I wouldn't even I wouldn't even consider the PS3 super complex. I would actually consider it quite easy. The yellow light of death is really really not as bad as. Um, as it's made out to be. Is this music too loud? Can you guys hear me at all? Um, it's really, really not that bad. Oh, I was really hoping I didn't have to tear this whole sticker off. Warranty stickers. I wouldn't consider the PS3 really that awful. Um, it's, it's, I mean, it's a lot of work. It's just, um, it's, just, it's a lot of work, it's just a, you know, but it, it, in theory, it's not super complicated. In fact, I find it funny, just how, uh, so this little thing right here, goes right in there. Let's turn the music down a little bit, that's fine with me. Is that any better? I need to get a... keeping all my tools kind of in a box behind me because I, I have really limited desk uh, space. Eventually, I want to move a... Eventually, I would like to move a desk into my garage. Maybe put a laptop out there and do this stuff out there where I have, like, dedicated space. Because I basically had to rearrange my whole streaming setup in an effort to get this done. Well, this might be too wide. Oh, isn't that a pain in the butt? Uh, oh, bummer. I have a skinnier one. Let me make sure that even fits. Okay, it does. Tell you what, we can get really, really janky with it. Uh, put these over here. So one of my favorite sets of tools is actually um, this $8 tool set I got with my vape. Or I, I bought it at a vape store. It's, um, you got like some little needle noses some little collapsible scissors, some pliers, some uh, flush cutters, a couple screwdrivers, and I use it for all, I use it for stuff all the time. Yeah, I know that people get really, really agitated with the PS3, especially because like. Oh, is that not gonna work? I thought this bit fit. I could be, I, I could be wrong. I don't have a screwdriver that's going to uh, be able to reach in there. Oh, that, that might be right. No, it's definitely not. Oh, that's, a, that's quite small. Maybe a bit smaller than this one. Yeah, I mean that this whole this whole little set right here with this. Cost me like eight bucks. And, uh, and no joke, it might be some of my most utilized tools for like just all kinds of stuff. Obviously, for my vape equipment, like <laughs> equipment, my vape, like changing cotton and, and wires and stuff like that on my vape, I use it naturally. That's what it's for. But like having a pair of collapsible scissors 
and some little needle noses. Pretty dang sweet. And this, uh, you know, I should just pull up what size this is. I didn't even say what size, just as a Torx. Ha ha ha. It's a pain because you need like a specialized, uh, you need like a specialized bit. Oh, it looks too small. Yeah. Good pair of forceps. What's funny is uh, this one little screw in here is what holds this entire lid on. I've gotten, um, I actually have one system, another one of this exact thing with the exact same issues that uh, somebody sold me for like 20 bucks. And it's very obvious that they were frustrated and tried to open the lid because like this part is broken off so the lid just slides back and forth. Yo, this is super fucking frustrating. I'm gonna go get the uh, the other screwdriver out of my car. I thought I could just do this real silly like I will be right back. The dogs are coming in here to hang out apparently. What do you guys want? That boy is probably gonna be too wide as well now that I'm looking at it. <sighs> so I actually I actually have one um, made specifically for this, but I take all my tools back and forth from work. And sometimes I'll leave some there, and I noticed when I got home today that I didn't have this exact one. But that's alright. We can uh, we can make it work, even if I have to. Just do it real silly like. Looks like it's a, it's might be smaller than that. I uh, I there's there's an actual Torx screwdriver made for this. And wouldn't you know it, I left it at work where it does no good. I actually have a whole box of bits that I think I left in the uh, in the other room as well. I put all my best bits into a into like a little container that I can carry around, so I don't have to carry all these. Occasionally you can get it loose with a uh, with a flathead based on how it's shaped. Doesn't look like I'm gonna get that lucky. Imagine the very first screw is <laughs> the most difficult part of all this. Yeah, I actually have like I think what two or three of the sixty gigabyte um, of the sixty gig PS threes. Um, Two of them are actually right behind me. There's one, and then we'll see if you can see the other one. And there's two, yeah. And then I have two broken ones. This, which is well, this one and another one in my closet. I don't like the angle that goes at, but it is what it is. It's too big. 
Now the dogs are mad that I locked them out of the room. They're gonna bang on my door like a bunch of bunch of goobers. Yeah, I, I love the PS3 and the 60 gig. So the difference between the CECH A and B and all of the others, even the others that are backwards compatible, is that the CECH A and B they um, they actually have hardware from the PS. Oh, I guess I I have it plugged in. I'll show everybody what it does here. So this is called the yellow light of death. You might be familiar, you might not. So you'll see. So it'll be green, it'll go into its own boot. It'll like boot up. And then it will um, turn yellow really quickly and then go red. So yeah, that's the, uh, that's why it's called like the yellow light of death. Pretty much a similar aspect to the whole red ring the Xbox did for a good long while before they got that shit squared away. And, um, you know, Sony did eventually, through later revisions of... Through later revisions of even the, uh, the fat PS3, did improve it quite a bit. But it's crazy, it's like, immediately afterwards, Xbox and, and PlayStation's got a whole lot better, you know? Mm, truly outrageous. I need to figure out. I don't want to have to break this because it's like... Then I gotta go buy a new cover. And I know that a lot of people don't like having to deal with the, uh, what the fuck? Oh. With the yellow light specifically because it requires you to have to, well actually a lot of people thought that like when they were, and you know I can't blame them because most of them were kids and stuff. Most of them were quite young. And they wanted to play Call of Duty. So when they read online that you can put your PlayStation in an oven for two hours, they were like, alright, dope, I can do that. I have I have that amount of skill. So now when I'm going to like buy them to either reuse them or or fix them or whatever and people are like well it's got yellow light of death and I'm like okay cool like that's not a problem the problem is whether or not your dumbass decided to stick it into an oven at any point because I you know then it could be a whole different set of issues and boy you'd be so surprised how many people are like yeah not nah, I stuck it in the oven oh okay that one's gonna work finally because I don't have a screwdriver that can reach in here, we gotta do it kind of a janky way, but. Whoops. Oh god. Amazing. Well, in the future, I'll definitely be bringing my, uh, all my tools home. I don't want to scar this case up. Granted, I have a bunch more, but. Now if I see them even for like, but you, you'd be surprised. People are starting to realize the value of like this model specifically to collectors because they are, uh, yeah, I don't reinstall this screw either. And if I do, I put a Phillips head in its place. Because nobody likes to carry specialized screwdrivers around, dude. I can't tell you how annoying it is to have to deal with Nintendo's proprietary bits. I, you know, I obviously have like the screwdriver set for SNESs and stuff like that, but it's just a real pain, you know. Because it's already a very hyper specialized situation. So go, I gotta have a soldering iron and a hot air station. I mean, you have to have a soldering iron. 
hot air station is kind of optional. But to add to the list of tools, just to change the battery on a, on a Game Boy cartridge, I'm like, come on now. Yeah, glad to hear it, my guy. Is that working? Oh yeah, it is. Okay, cool. Sorry, I apologize, guys. I definitely should have just done this before the stream. But I didn't realize until I had already set up this jerry-rigged camera here that uh, that I didn't have the correct... And there you go. So see, it just looks like that. Let's see if we can... Uh... Whatever. Uh... There you go. So it's just a little Torx bit, and I have the exact bit for it right here, but you'll notice that my uh, my two screwdrivers, they're just a little, you know, too wide to fit in there. <laughs> Anyways, we move on. One thing that's really nice, one thing that's really, really nice is uh, if you have an ice cube tray, right? So if you have an, just a regular ice cube tray, you can just sit it out and I will have it next to my stuff and you can put the different size screws in each little ice cube square, you know? We used to have some, but I guess when we moved, I guess when we moved, we got rid of it. Or, you know, because we have an ice maker now. And I didn't even think about how often I use them for that. Great, I mean, they're not expensive or anything. I'll just go buy more. But that's like a really fun thing that I... That's, that's a little neat piece of knowledge for anybody out there. Try it out, seriously. It's super handy. Because a lot of these have different size screws. This one has a whole bunch of different size screws. All right, now that that's done, we'll show you guys what's next. So, yeah, with that Torx bit out, it literally just pops open slides down like that real easy I haven't opened this or seen the inside so if it's dirty it, it just might be dirty I don't know so look there you go there it is it's actually just the top layer there's a whole nother casing underneath which is a pain uh, fortunately fortunately it's all just Phillips heads and uh, Thankfully, there's actually a bunch of screws in this, and some of them are, are longer than others. Uh, however, you'll notice that like on um, on some of the, yeah, here I'll show you right quick. So right here, you'll notice this where it's you see that S with that arrow pointing. Let's see if I can get it to focus. That's uh, so it does a pretty good job of telling you where the small screws are, so that you can kind of keep track of them a little better. Which is nifty. Um, where is my... This little guy. Boop, boop, boop. He just picks up screws for me. Sometimes you can even, like, depending on how close it is to coming out. So if it's just kind of getting stuck in there, you just, right? See, look at the size of that, look at that unit. Whoop. Yeah, the magnetic grabber, man. That's, my, that's one of my all time favorites, that's for sure. Um, you know, one thing that I need to do is, it's a couple things actually. I'm gonna pull this out so that in the future I don't have to redo it. But I'm also going to um, remove the HDD now. I mean, you don't have to at some point. So yeah, this is the little mount that that Torx screw goes into. You can absolutely put a Phillips head or something like that in there instead so that in the future, it's not a huge pain in the butt. You know, you don't have to use one screwdriver for a single screw and that's the only, you know, you, it's dumb. Same thing with like Super Nintendos and stuff like that. When, when I mod them, when I put like RGB bypasses in Super Nintendos, I generally will um, 
switched all the screws to Phillips head. Because you can get the exact same size Phillips heads. And it's like, there you go, you're welcome. You don't ever have to deal with that annoyance again. So this is still the, uh, yeah, this is still your 60 gig HDD. Um, so yeah, it looks like he never, never cared to replace it, which is fine. I mean, that's good. Generally, when I buy used stuff, it's ideal for it to be as, you know, not super tampered with, so. Yeah, so funny, when I was kind of a hoodlum teenager, I would, uh, I would use, I would use, uh, I keep forgetting my mics over here now. I would use those little, like, sockets for, like, to smoke illicit substances out of. So my dad one day was like, where the hell are all my sockets? Those were the days, Dylan. <laughs> Those were the days indeed, man. Cause you would, I would like use a socket from a socket wrench set and then I would take like a screen off of a sink and boom, there you go. You got like a little, uh, sorry, this isn't the kind of science we're supposed to be teaching here, but these guys thankfully are very easy to keep track of because fucking look at them. Yeah, they all broke. And thank you so much, Possum. I appreciate the uh, appreciate the luck. I keep like trying to lean into this thing over here, just to realize that my mic is not attached to this. So you see my webcam? I literally have it zip tied. This is my girlfriend's webcam. I have it zip tied and pointed at this. <laughs> with my mic stand. And I keep thinking like that my mic is still over here and it's not. She doesn't know that yet, so. What's the actual symptoms of this one? Okay, so what happens is for the yellow light of death, I can actually show you really fast before I get it completely dismembered. I bite my nails, so sometimes um, they're not long enough to grab these, which is why that handy dandy magnetic boy is is one of my best buds. But it shouldn't be that difficult. So I will. Uh, I still have it plugged in. So I'll show I'll show you what it looks like when a when a PS3 yellow light of death, right? So it looks like this. You'll turn, go to turn it on. And it'll do that. It'll, it's, it's about a three second process. It'll uh, go from red, obviously, to green. And then real quickly, it'll swap to yellow and then red and then beep at you. Beep, beep, beep. And that's the, the you know, the pinnacle of yellow light of death. Um, now, generally what that means is, you know, some people will say things like, you know, there's actually, when, when all this was coming out, there was actually a ton of theories about exactly like what caused it. For the, a while, people thought it was because, sorry, you might see my noggin. People thought it was because Sony was using flux that didn't have lead in it. So they said that, um, so reballing by reapplying solder would fix it, which reballing is basically, re there's like a ball method of soldering where on the back of a, a board, 
you'll see a bunch of like what looks like little balls and that's kind of what that means but the uh, you know that was not necessarily true and all these like crazy theories that people had they really got even more uh, they really got even more crazy because as people started microwaving their shit and it started working they were like oh look there you go yep see it was right which led more people to microwave their shit. Dude, what did I do with my magnet boy? I was just talking him up. Oh, goodness. I bet I'm sitting on it. Give me a second. Yep, I am. So, um, people thought it was because of the solder. People thought it was because of the heat sinks. And the heat sinks, they did really use uh, really just dreadful thermal paste. On the uh, when they when they apply the heat sink or when they apply the paste to the heat sink that touches the GPU and the CPU which we'll see here in a little bit um, that that was true that was accurate it was it's really garbage so we're gonna be changing that out dang I thought I counted all ten um, obviously thermal paste it doesn't last long anyways even if it was good quality. So I have some here that I'll obviously swap it out. And in some cases, you could just you could just take off you could just change the thermal paste and it would uh, and it would work fine. Um, you know, for people who were you know, you got to remember the demographic for the PS3 at the time was like Call of Duty playing you know, young kids, right? So when they're googling or you you know, YouTube was coming around they're YouTube in like ways to fix their PS3 and they're seeing a lot of videos about like put it in the put it in the fucking oven um, put it in the oh, it's actually in pretty good shape put it in the oven or um, you know what have you open it up and open it up and and just uh, reapply thermal paste like those are things that that kids that age could do so they would they would try it out. All right, so here we got. Huh. That's actually pretty clean. I don't know if you guys saw the last one that I did, but it was fucking disgusting. This one's actually surprisingly clean. Uh, the first thing I gotta do is just disconnect this little ribbon cable here. It's a little tab that pops up, and you just shoot, shoot, slide that bad boy out. And there we go. So yeah, up here in this area, um, you can actually, so this right here can actually pop off, you see? So sometimes when you take these apart, this will actually still be attached, right? So if you're confused, if it looks different, it, it goes in, you, don't, you know, sometimes when you open it up, you don't have to do this because it'll still be like this and sitting right here. Um, but I took those screws out ahead of time. You don't really have to. Um, if you leave these two screws in, which are right, which are right here, which are right here and here, you can actually get this off without taking those out. I just figured I always take them out. And if you do that, this will still be mounted so you don't have to worry about undoing that. But yeah, I mean, that looks pretty good. What is this console, 20 something years old? Maybe not that old. What year did the PS3 come out? Um, oh shit, it couldn't have been that long. What? 10 years? 10? 12 years? Yeah, the last one was fucking nasty. So what does cure the yellow light of death? 90% um, of the time, it's, uh, I'll show you when we get to it to give you a better example. But 90% of the time, it's a capacitor replacement. Um, there are these capacitors in here called NEC token capacitors. And uh, they're just dreadful. And there's a lot of them. I, I believe there's eight. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be replacing them. We're going to have to... You generally only have to do the two that are on the GPU. So we'll be replacing them with these here. These capacitors. Um, 
So in, in place of one of those big NEC G, um, capacitors, we'll just put three or four. I haven't decided yet. I think you can actually do it with three because it needs to be 1,200 microfarads and three of these would be... Um, three of these would be, you know, 470 times three is more than 1,200. So yeah, I think we can actually just do it with three, but there's a couple of different ways you can do it. And I'll show, I'll, I'll do, uh, I'll, I'll do the first, the two GPU chips, and then we'll see if it works from that point. And if not, we will, um, you know, we'll obviously do the others, but on both of those different chips, I'll, I'll show you the two different styles of, of how you can, uh, how you can remedy, you know, there's, there's two different thoughts of how to put those little tiny capacitors in there. Cause once you see it, you'll understand it's kind of, an, it's kind of an ugly space. Uh, so this is like your card reader here, obviously. I can tell you that with all my time with PS3s, I've literally never once used this. <laughs> never. Um, you know, maybe you used it a lot, I don't know. Maybe maybe that's something you guys used a ton of. I personally, never. So this is obviously your uh, CD drive. Um, back here, this will be your Bluetooth antenna. Just wanna make sure. I can get all this unplugged. Sometimes it sticks in the back. So you just unplug this bad boy. There's a ribbon cable under here that is a, uh, a little bit of a pain, but we'll go ahead and get a uh, little baby. Oh, dude, oh, screwdriver. I have a bad habit of putting things between my legs and then I forget about them. There you go. Real easy, this thing is don't don't be afraid. You can kind of bend it. This thing is super durable. Um, in fact, this whole like oh, there might actually be a disc in here. Maybe not. So yeah, the capacitors go bad. They're just dreadful capacitors. So here is your power supply. Um, there's actually. Even though it's still a Model A, I wonder if I can show. Oh no, it's screwed. It's screwed together. Even though it's still a Model A, this is one of the earlier revisions of the power supplies that they put in here. And the way that you can tell is because they will have different. Uh, they'll have air holes scattered all throughout this. So there's two different, two different power supplies that that came just in this single model. Uh, and what's interesting though is like, you know, with all the heat issues and stuff like that, you see where this sits, and you see how much of that is, is, is relatively obstructed. Now if you don't use these, these SD readers or whatever, the PS3 can actually operate without it. Now on the revision that has more air holes, it would be blocking up really half of your airflow. Um, if I get the other one out tonight, I'll, sh I'll remember to show you guys. but. You can just remove that if you want a little bit more, you know, airflow or you know better temperatures or what have you, yeah, you know, in this in this area. Um, but if you have this revision with the, it's missing these air holes to begin with. Then you know it's kind of it's up to you. I'm gonna put it back in just because I like to not have to keep track of everything. But what's next is uh, is our power supply here. There's actually two plugs. I like to unplug it from here so that it stays together. And then in the back here, we have another little one right here. You just kind of have to wiggle it. Uh, I'll just do it after I take it out. Now one thing worth mentioning is you don't actually have to take the little Bluetooth sensor out antenna. You can totally get by. Um, you can totally get by without doing that, which is nice because like keeping track of less pieces is always a win in my book. Which is why I I know that like it doesn't really matter which side you unplug this little cable from, but if you unplug it this way, it stays with the power supply and it's just less shit you gotta keep track of. Oops. PS3 power supplies 
I've actually met, you know, with all the overheating and all that, the issues that this console has with those things, I've actually never had to change one. Now, I'm not going to say that that means that those power, the power supplies don't go bad. I'm sure they do, just like anything else. But, um, there's a lot of consoles out there with, like, you know, historically bad power supply, uh, models and revisions and such all right i thought i could get it but nope i'm gonna have to do the last little baby screw oops sorry i would like to get a camera that goes down so that i don't have to do everything at an angle all righty get this little bad boy out so yeah there you go there's your power supply. And yeah, usually, like I said, uh, there'll be these little slats all over here, um, from here all the way to top to bottom. Basically like an industrial power supply where you got a bunch of circular holes. And, um, and those card readers really block up a lot of airflow. So if that's something you're interested in, it's very simple to do. Basically just need the screws that, or screwdrivers for the screws you see me do this far. Um, this is right here, so this is obviously where your power supply goes in. Just kind of be careful with that if you're ever dabbling because you can bend these. They're uh, kind of a pain in the butt to replace. Thankfully, like it's one piece that you can just take out and swap if you'd like to. Uh, but at the same time, like you really don't want to buy extra shit if you don't have to. <laughs> I can tell you how often I've been like, all right, this is the stuff that I need. Like the PS1 I was redoing. I was like, I need caps, I need this, this, and that. So I, I made an order, it all got here, it took like a week. I opened up this PlayStation and, um, and then realized the power button was bad. So now I'm ordering a power button, it'll be here in a week, and it's, it just sucks. <laughs> it sucks not having like tons of stuff on hand. Because again, I'm amateur, I can't stress that enough. I, I'm not a pro at these. This is actually, this is actually a pretty good, um, you know, I don't, I don't think that the guy ever took it apart to clean it on his own. I just think that he, it stayed not dirty pretty well, which is, which is pretty, pretty impressive. Um, so we're gonna take these bad boys out here. Oh. This is your little, uh, this is your digital board. This, you would touch this little metal prong right here. For, um, so yeah, this little metal prong, let's see if I can get it to focus. That's your power button right there. Boop, boop. Make sure you eject. Boop, boop. Pretty neat. Very simple. Very cool. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is detach this. We'll actually leave this attached here. Um, similar to like any Wi-Fi or whatever else, you got this really little, uh, this little cable right here. It actually just, you know, if you just jiggle it nicely, it comes off. And they're very easy to pop back on. So you can actually already see one of the capacitors that we'll be replacing. I don't know if we can get it to focus, but it's these, actually these two right here. These are the ones, these are the culprits, nine times out of 10. These little NEC token capacitors. So we'll finish tearing this bad, bad boy down and then we'll, uh, then we'll address it. Now for the most part, most of the screws on the inside of this are universal. All these ones that hold like the major elements to the board. 
excuse me, uh, aside from the ones that you can actually see are indicated in certain places, like right here, um, where they're smaller, uh, obviously the one that the ground for the power supply is a bit bigger. The one, the two screws that hold in that, that power touch panel, they're a little different. Um, but all, all together, you don't really have to keep track of a whole lot of different hardware. Man, even the adhesives on these little, uh, these little pads are in pretty good shape. I think I can, I think I can remove all these without having to take this off. It's a single screw. It's not a big deal. I was just, I just didn't know for sure. Where did I learn about all this? Um, I mean, I had like a very limited knowledge before, but I'm not gonna lie to you, dude. My, the job I have now, um, taught me a lot. At least it taught me basic electronic stuff right so that when i wanted to teach myself things like on the internet and what have you i had a, a, a an at least an introductory understanding oh i can't believe i need to take this off if that makes sense and uh you know i buy broken consoles just so that i can try to practice and get better because i again i'm oops very amateur at this i'm not a uh, seasoned you know, you got like the Voltars and Dragon's Horde and iFix Retro and like all these people that are awesome that I like salivate over on Twitter. Their work is super stellar. So I just buy a bunch of broken crap for deals and I'm like, if I can fix it, cool, man. If I can't, at least I got practice and you're not going to break it worse, right? So that's kind of what I've been doing for the last six months or so. Oh, come on. Yeah, once I learned how to, uh, oh shit. Once I learned how to, um, especially, I'll tell you the one thing that helped the most. First of all, the, the number one skill is how to use a meter. That was like one of the most important things I've ever been taught in my entire life. <laughs> is how to use a meter. Yeah, they're all the same. Okay, cool. Once you learn how to use a meter, man, I'll tell you what. It was one of the most valuable skills because when I started to check, oops, when I started to Chuck E. Cheese, I didn't really know how to use a meter. I fix retro is amazing. Same thing, uh, Mobius is another amazing one. Voltar, obviously, all those uh, Dragon's Horde Gaming is another one that I follow. That's really great. And I'm constantly asking them questions, and I know they're tired of me, but like that's how I learn stuff, you know, as I ask a bunch. And I'm sure they're at the point now where they're like, man. Give, give me a break. Slide that little guy out. It comes out easier if you pop it up, but it's not a big deal. So this is actually your, uh, I believe, I want to say this is your Wi-Fi board. Um, yeah, here you go. So this is what drives your ability to have <laughs> Wi-Fi. Um, you can see this thing is, is pretty, uh, like every time that I see like any dust, this is actually in pretty good shape. Um, but this is where it usually accumulates. Um, I want to put it. Oh really? That's awesome. I didn't know he did stuff like that. He's a super cool guy, man. I know that they're hella busy and I'm always busting their balls being like, Hey, what do you think about this? Where's a good place to get this? Do you have trusted retailers for this? And, um, you know, I expect them to not answer me or to be like, hey man, listen, leave me alone, figure it out yourself or whatever. But I always try asking anyways, because worst case scenario, they ignore you. And they've been super, super cool to me uh, and very helpful, which is nice. Mobius especially as well. That's right, I did. Bro, <laughs> I totally did. I was actually talking to Soul Killer about it. So I just typed in killer 
and you were the first one that popped up because it's alphabetical. And I just clicked on you real quick and asked. And but but you were like, did you mean to ask me this? And I was like, what the fuck is he talking about? And then I looked and I was like, ah, yeah, my bad, dude. That's that's my bad. <laughs> Gotta get my little vape in. And also, if you're like not sure if you can do this stuff, you have very limited understanding, or if you just want to clean your consoles, man, like I can't stress enough. If you if you got a bad boy that's dirty, and what did I do with it? And you can get like one of these or something, or even like a this is like a duster, an electric duster, right? Um, I use it because my computer is open face on my my desktop, so it gets dust dusty very quick. Um, obviously, I, I do my girlfriend's PC, which is right next to me as well. Um, I do all my consoles usually. I used to do it like once a month. Now that I have like a gazillion, I've gotten a little bit lazier about it, and I only do the ones that I use like once every two months. But man, there's I can't stress enough just how many resources are readily available on like YouTube and stuff just for a simple like tear down and, and put back together. And I know a lot of people, especially with this console specifically, um because they're so it is so frail and uh, it's historically just had tons of issues I know that if people have like a working 60 gig at home they're like you know what dude I don't want to open it up I don't want to I don't even want to roll the dice you know God forbid it works I open it I clean it I put it back together and it doesn't realistically that's you know I, I understand that and if that's gonna stop you from uh, from doing it then by all means don't do it do what you're comfortable with for sure um, however, where am I missing? Oh, right here. It, it is really not, it's really not that bad. And you might be able to extend the life of, uh, of one of these bad boys for a while. Like the one that Nightness in chat gave me, or I stole from him rather, is over there, is the one in the left corner of that, you can kind of see it back there by the pink PlayStation, right, boop, right there. Um, that's actually a launch edition that's never once been worked on. I open it up and clean it. And that's really about it. Oops, wrong way. What's the worst console to open up? I mean, this one's kind of a pain. Honestly, I hate the Super Nintendos. I hate them. Because Nintendo uses a proprietary bit that looks like, uh, it looks like this. It's got, it's like a little specialized bit. Um, a lot of Genesis carts, um, the Genesis, Virtual Boys, um, Sega Nomad, like a lot of them use this exact same bit. And boy, it is awful. Because like, even if you have the bit that fits, it's really hard to see with this bad camera. But even if you have the bit, this correct screwdriver, there's like little teeth in here, right? And if the screw is in there really, really good, and you turn to loosen it, you can eat away at those teeth because they have to be so tiny in order for you to to use it right. So it can eat away at your screwdriver. So it's just a it's it's awful. It's just awful. <laughs> I should have some actually. I usually keep them. Um, I have a bag of spare parts. Let me see. No, that's not it. Here we go. Yeah, here, I'll show you. So this is a uh, bag of co uh, controller spare parts I keep on in my toolbox. I have, a, obviously, a much bigger one in the back, like in my cabinet back there. Uh, let's see if I have any of those Super Nintendo bits. Usually I throw them away because they're such filth. Sometimes I keep them. Yeah, I don't see any in here. But man, they're, they're fucking awful. I hate them. Which is crazy, right? Because it, it takes like four screws to open up the Super Nintendo. And it's still like one of my least favorite things to do. Because considering I've opened what? like I've taken off like 20 screws so far during this. Alrighty. Looks like we are ready to rock. So one thing you can actually do here is... Uh, oh, no. I knew I missed one. 
when I'm not talking and I'm just doing this not on stream, what the fuck? I um, I count all the screws I'm taking out so that I know exactly when I'm done. What the? Oh, there it is. Otherwise, you just sometimes miss some. How difficult is a Saturn? Um, I've actually never like modded or had to fix a Saturn, but I have opened one up uh, just recently actually to clean it. It's really not that bad. It's really not that bad. I would I would put it on the same um, level of intricacy as a standard PS1. Not crazy, not, not crazy bad at all. Oh, it wants to come out all in one piece. That sucks. Oh yeah, duh. Because I didn't take the screws off of the uh, the heatsink plates. I'm like, damn, it's just gonna come in one big unit. Uh, one th oh, you know, one thing that's really handy here. Um. So these, right? These put pressure on the GPU and the CPU. That's why they're bent like this. And they are essentially what so right there is your that's your GPU I believe yep so um, these put pressure from the onto it to push it up against the heat sink which is on the other side now what you can actually do is right here you can put like a I don't know, like a, a nickel or something, or just a washer. And you can even put washers right here as well. And that'll just force a little bit more pressure. And even something like that is really, really nice for making sure that that thermal paste is making good contact and that that heat is being distributed as much as, as much surface area from that heat sink is touching that CPU and GPU as possible. So that's one uh, neat little thing someone taught me. I've not actually done it on any of them myself, just because it was taught to me so recently. But I thought that was pretty cool. Real simple, nifty little idea. Opening my Super Famicom was a bad experience. Yeah, yeah. It's, so, dude, I'm telling you. I only recently ordered the screwdrivers for it. Now, there's methods where you can like heat up a, some plastic... You just jam it in there, but then you're gonna like melt your console and stuff a little bit. Uh, it's it's awful, man. It's awful. It just sucks when things are locked behind proprietary bits. And like I get why they do it. I do. It's just kind of annoying. There we go. And this should come off very very easy. Uh, we're gonna take that that Bluetooth antenna off really fast. Pop that bad boy in there. If I'm missing something in chat, absolutely just re-ask it. Can you put the plastic back on after with the 360? Um, I don't know what you mean. Come on. Come on. So there is a uh, little notches back here. Okay. Let's do this unit first. Usually I can pop this PSU out. Yeah, like this. Oh. I kind of like to have the case stuck around so that when I do take shit apart, it's not an issue. So I'm gonna leave that right here for just a second while I get this uh, relay off. This little relay board here is obviously what supplies your power. It stays in one big piece. So you can absolutely just, boop, pop it right out. Um, th this actually right here, sometimes this goes bad. So if you, if you aren't getting no power whatsoever when you hit the switch and turn it on, you don't get a red light or anything, and you can verify for 100% that it's not your cord, this thing right here actually goes bad. 
and they're very simple to replace. I mean, it literally slides out. You put a new one in. It comes like this. Boom, you're done. Uh, so, you know, that's just something I, I learned over time. Now I'm going to put it back just because uh, it's easier for me to kind of keep track of everything for now. We'll eventually do away with it. I'm going to leave it kind of propped up like this. So now with that PSU off, we can pop it open. Here we go. Well, the padding is all in pretty good shape still. So. so these are the um, capacitors we'll be replacing. These little guys right here, they're responsible for your yellow light of death. Um, there's actually four on this side and there's four on the other side. We're actually just going to replace these two and then we're going to see whether or not it works. If it does, we'll kind of like call it a day just because we could sit here all day doing all of them. Realistically, if you got fuck all to do, just do them all because, um, you don't, you know, cause there's, if I just do two of these and another one's fail, they're going to yellow light again. Right. Um, you know, I'm going to eventually eat dinner tonight, so I'm not even going to bother. I'm going to just do these two. And then we'll see. And if it doesn't work, we'll do the next two, and we'll move on that way. But uh, if you got the time, you can absolutely just do them all, all at once and save yourself the potential future trouble. But uh, replacing these, it could last two days. It could last six years. You never know, right? Look at all this. Uh, so this is manufacturing flux. It looks kind of gross and grimy, but this is just from the manufacturer, the flux that didn't get cleaned off of boards. So if you see any of this, don't be like, oh my god, it's rusting or it's corroded or anything like that. It's, it's not that bad. Uh, if you care enough, you can, actually, you can actually clean that shit off with a little bit of uh, isopropyl. I only could find 91%. 99 obviously works better. So... Uh, but thanks to coronavirus, it's like damn near impossible to find any IPA whatsoever. So, what's for dinner? I don't know. Pizza rolls, I imagine. But yeah, you just come in here with a toothbrush and some IPA. And you can clean that flux up quite easily uh, without really damaging any components here. You don't want to like brush the shit out of it obviously but look it's all cleaned up already just just like that uh and for anybody who's like well why are you putting alcohol why why are you putting a liquid on a board right well uh it's because alcohol evaporates really really quickly and it also cleans it so you know i know that some people know so little about it and that's not a knock to you or whatever by all means you do you I know that some people are sometimes afraid of, uh, sometimes afraid of, like, why would you put, why would you do that, you know? Too young to care about the SWES on the, yeah, 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 the SNES is, uh, is a pain. If it's not yellow light of death thing, you can still swap them out, right? So, like, People, uh, there's a, col a collector, I mod his stuff for him. Oh, did my music stop? There's a collector I do uh, a bunch of stuff for. And he actually just, I just actually got him a $65 Model A. Another one. Uh, perfect working edition, pristine. It's, it's a good deal. But even he was like, you know what, dude? I don't even want to fuck with it. Just do the whole capacitor replacement now. Um... Because, you know, who knows? It could be two weeks on the road where I eventually have to do it anyways. Or it could be, you know, it could never really be an issue. Eventually, capacitors all go bad. That's just a fact of the world, but... Deoxit, you really only want to use on contacts. On any kind of contacts. Um, I wouldn't use it on boards by themselves. Yeah, so funny enough, I actually bought this 91% isopropyl alcohol with um, for 10 bucks, 
and it wasn't even full. That's how bad I literally got it off somebody on Craigslist. Like that's how hard up we are for fucking alcohol right now. Okay, um I don't know if I want to do this now or if I want to continue. We're eventually going to have to deconstruct the rest of it to thermal paste it um, because we have to reapply the thermal paste no matter what. So it might be worth um, excuse me, getting ahead of that. I guess we'll. I guess yeah, we'll we'll do that. Alrighty, I'm opening up the diagram. Oops, minimized it. Open up at the diagram. Oh, did I get a, a window sound? That's my bad, y'all. I can't hear what's coming out of my speakers, so I have no idea what music we're even listening to. Well, that's a bit extreme. Maybe we'll listen to something a little bit more relaxing. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I know. It's bad. It's so hard to find IPA. I actually had somebody on Favor, like, run to so many different stores, and they're like, I can't find it anywhere. And I'm like, that's crazy. You want to know why? Because people bought it to make hand sanitizer, which I get. Cool, whatever. But hand sanitizer is back in stock. Like, Target had fucking tons of hand sanitizer right next to where the alcohol would be, but no alcohol. And I was like, why are you guys still doing this? I don't get it. Whatever, you know. People crazy. What are you gonna do? Um, yeah, I might actually. So what I'll do now is. Lay down some microfibers here. Yeah, and I guess it's just because, like, um, you know, alcohol has more purposes than just the hand sanitizer, or hand sanitizer kind of does one thing. I get it, but still, you know, there's never been a need for commercial amounts of fucking IPA. So here is your, uh, your fan and your heat sink. Pretty nasty ordeal, if I do say so myself. One thing we're gonna have to um, do is clip this little guy together here. To get this board up. Yeah, fuck it. I'll do it afterwards. We can actually flip this bad boy upside down, which is why I lay down the microfibers. Oh, I, I, this is one of my least favorite things to take apart, is this heat sink. Did I remove the GPU? No. It's still on the, uh, unplug the heat sink here. That's just the underside of it, so. And the heat sink only goes back in one way, which is indicative of, uh, of this right here, this little notch. Oh, look at that. So usually, that's actually not really dirty at all. The other one I had was like, all of these blades were white with dust. That bad boy was in rough shape. It was in really rough shape. Okie dokie. I'm gonna put these to the side because these are much smaller than everything else. You don't wanna accidentally use them for the wrong thing. Oh, oops. Baby screwdriver here. It's been it. Yeah, it works. I have a uh, a little thing I can plug it into.
Yeah, I mean, to be honest, if you don't, if you're not using it, look at that. There's your dust. Cute. So here's your battery. Um, I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure on the PS3, but I think it works the same way as the PS2. Uh, this battery here is actually for your internal clock. So, um, you know, that's something. It's worth mentioning that this uh, connector here is so frail. Let's see, you can usually just, you know, obviously sneak it out. But occasionally, you pull the whole connector with it. You see this? You don't obviously want to tug too hard on this little red and so I'm gonna use these and just kind of wiggle it a little bit. Give me a better grip. There we go. Nice, nice and easy. Um, I've had PS3s in the past where I straight up just pulled this whole unit out, and it slides back in just fine, with no issues. Um, this is a just a CR2032, a little watch battery. Um, anything else I want to do right here, right now? I guess not. Let me separate this. Mm. It's usually a non-issue, but... Sometimes it do be a pain in the ass to get this board separated. We got a lot of yeah. Just double check and make sure I don't have any screws before I start tugging on it. Cool. All right, Nito. I just gotta get a better grip on this so I don't wanna. Do anything dumb. Oops. What happened? the diagram of I don't know what happened to it is my stream still working yeah stick it in the oven you really can't fuck it I'm just gonna pull the heat sink off here so this is your uh, this is your heat sink if you it does move a little bit so don't be uh, I know the first time I took one apart I was like oh fuck dude what did I do that now that it has this motion and then I realized nothing. That's just how it's made. <laughs> so this is all your old um, thermal paste, obviously. I do have a little, uh, always, man, I can't stress this enough. Always keep like a little trash bin <laughs> or a box where you can throw trash because it's pretty common to have a lot of it. So yeah, this actually is not the worst I've ever seen, but so here's your, uh, here is your GPU, here's your PC, your CPU, right? Look how little thermal paste is on there. Like, you can almost read the underneath. I mean, I can see it here, but you can't really on the camera, but there's like nothing left. Um, and that's completely stock, all on Sony. That's on them. I, uh... I would use a non-conductive thermal paste if you have it available. Obviously, Arctic Silver or whatever works really well. I think what I have on hand is um, Corsair Performance Thermal Paste. 
what I've always used, it works fine. So, um, one thing that's worth mentioning is, I don't see it anywhere when I pulled that out, is, uh, some of the revisions have, like, a little plastic cap right here that covers this up. Just make sure you remove that. You'll lose it. It'll pop off when you least expect it. I wouldn't pull on this, because <laughs> it's so frail, so please don't, uh, follow my bad habits. So that's your separation. Um, if you can keep all these pads up here, nice. <laughs> because finding which components they sit on and trying to get them to sit flush so that you can put everything back together is a, is a huge pain in the rear. Um, this thing's looking a little cooked, actually. So here are the uh, capacitors on this side. One, two, three, four. Uh, so what we're gonna do first is we're going to, we're gonna clean these guys up a little bit. I should really get a paper towel or something. Um, microfiber works fine, but these are kind of dirty. We'll, 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 we'll do one of these. Just get a little bit of uh, IPA on these bad boys. And thermal paste doesn't like really... Uh, getting wet so we'll clean this up real nice look at that cute and just go back over it um, or you can just wait for the the alcohol to dry sometimes you'll have to go over it multiple times to get rid of all the thermal paste because the more you wipe the thermal paste it just leaves like less and less behind so you might have to go back over it a couple times if thermal paste gets underneath which it does have a habit of doing it's not the end of the world. Um, Sony's, the, the thermal paste that they used was non-conductive, so it's not going to break anything. But it does look ugly and it bothers me, so I just get something really light and it just kind of coax it out like that. Um, and then you can obviously just take your IPA toothbrush and brush what's left of it out. Hey, Murdoch, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Sorry for the kind of uh, odd camera angle and everything. It's, I'm definitely not set up for this style of stream. It was either this or Nino Kuni tonight, and I was like, well, we'll try this out, see how it goes. I've never done anything that wasn't playing video games on Twitch, so kind of a foreign concept. You can actually see the... Uh, evaporating out if you catch it in the light you can kind of see the my camera is not amazing but you can kind of see the rsx right there for the uh for the cpu or for the gpu rather but yeah so these are the um these are the, t the token capacitors nec token i don't know if you can read that if i can get there, there you go nec token the ones we're actually going to be focused on are going to be these two so there's actually a couple ways that you can go about removing these right now i'm going to show you the way that is the least likely to damage everything um definitely like by the book the most recommended way and then i'll show you kind of the if you don't have a hot air station way to do it hey murdoch is it really your birthday my man well, happy birthday, dude. That's awesome. What are you, uh, 21? 21, right? <sighs> 21 again. So that's nice. No, I won't be reflowing or reballing. I'll just be straight up um, replacing capacitors here. Letting my hot air station warm up. I probably should have done this a little bit ago. 
So, um, on these token capacitors, the way that it works, and I'll try to explain it, even though my camera is, is not really great at close up. Let's see if I can get it to focus a little bit better. Okay, so these are the ones we're gonna be focused on. You can kind of see these, the all this up here, these are vias, right? And if you look closely, you see right there is a, uh, a silver rail, and it goes all the way across to here. Now this top one, that's gonna be positive, and this bottom one is negative, and then this one is negative, and then this one is positive. Um, and then these vias are actually all connected to the same rail. So these, all these holes right here, they're all negative. They're on the same rail as this negative rail here. Everything, I'm sorry, they're all positive. Everything in this middle section is negative. They're attached to these two rails. And then up here, this one is positive. And these are all positive as well. This, all this, this, these vias up here. So there's actually two ways you can go about doing this. Um, because when you do pull this off, oh, my light's getting dim. I wonder if it's. Turned it up to probably 320. All right, there we go. Hot air station seems like it's nice and warm. Oh, is it? This is one I got from work. I used to have a nice digital one, but I gave it to my girlfriend's uh, stepdad for Christmas. I like, uh, I mean, it's not a hacko or whatever, but it works really well and I can't complain. So this is gonna be the standard way of doing it, right? You just get a hot air station, you crank it up. Oh man, can you see the flickering light? actually probably not excellent and uh, so the issue is with the 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 issue here with the uh, ps3 specifically is that uh, the board is so thick that it really 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 dissipates heat super super well so it's really difficult and you actually forgot to get my tool out so it's really difficult to like target heat. Uh, enough to lift these up, okay? So these things are a huge pain in the butt to get off. Huge pain. A board heater? No. So generally what you do is, it could take as, as long as five minutes where you sit here and just apply 320 degrees of heat and you just sit here and you attempt to cook it and eventually these solder joints underneath here they're going to uh, soften up and you'll be able to, to pop this bad boy up there's actually a middle rail that's kind of hidden by this capacitor and um, you don't want to pull it up from that point, so yeah, it, it'll take a it'll take a while. And this is why people like to do the uh, this is why people like to do the the other method, which is a little bit more potentially damaging on the board. Um, but these boards specifically, these PS3 ones that are very thick, um, heat dissipates really really well. So it takes a lot longer to heat up certain sections, which is why you can actually just use a whole a board preheater that like warms boards up for you. Uh, I don't actually have anything like that, so I'm just gonna do it the old-fashioned way, which is apply a copious amount of heat for a good long while, and just keep on. You know, obviously, you don't want to. Uh, you don't want to like pry. Once they're nice and hot, they should just move right off in most cases. Now, because these token capacitors are made out of a lot of plastic, they sometimes will break and fray and stuff like that, or stick. Uh, and you obviously don't want to, I wish I could show you better, you don't want to just apply all the heat in one area. You know, obviously. Wish I could do this in a better spot for you guys. There you go. Might be better. 
You don't want to get too close either. I mean, this is kind of the range I like to sit in with a hot air station. And people are like, well, what if I don't have a hot air station? Well, I'll show you the way to do it without a hot air station right afterwards. Which most people do not recommend. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, you can tell just how not hot it is um, by doing this. Giving it a little, giving it a little nudge, just kind of seeing where it's at. Breathe on it really hard? No, no, definitely, definitely uh, not going to do it for you there. But yeah, I mean, we could be here for five or six minutes. It's, uh, it is really that hard to heat up. And uh, if you're like, how much does one of these, this one right here, this hotter station, cost me like 40 bucks. Primarily, I just use it for like uh, SMDs and stuff like that, like surface mounted components, capacitors, and things like that on boards. It's not, you know, it's probably not a good enough hot air station to pull like, you know, these tiny chips and stuff that are on some of these boards off. But yeah, it's not, am I going to save for a rework? I might, man. I might one day. I just, I don't have enough demand for it um, with how much I use. Uh, I don't use a hot air station enough. My ass is lazy, and I'll usually take capacitors off with um, my soldering iron until I, like, pull a pad up, and then I'm like, God damn it, and then I'll get the hot air station out. <laughs> so I don't know if I care enough. My next big purchase is probably going to be a solder. Like the, the pumps, the suckers, I love those, man. Those are so sweet because I can actually use it for work. But I'm waiting for work to open back up so that I can bill it to them. Is it a type of uh, – yeah, it is actually. So these these tokens are really, really, really faulty. Um, it's, it's very common knowledge that they're uh, pretty jank, pretty jank pieces of little garbage here. And we're going to be using these instead uh, to replace them. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put three of these capacitors on. Uh, so these are right here. They're, they actually run at 2.3 volts, these capacitors, uh, 1,200 microfarads. Uh, so you need, with the capacitors that you put on there, to meet or exceed that amount of uh, capacitance. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put three of these 470 microfarads on there, and, uh, and we'll be good to go. Now you can, uh, most people, like when they first started doing these reworks, were doing, um, it doesn't feel like 300 degrees. When they were doing these reworks initially, they were doing um, four, but you don't actually need you don't actually need all four. Um, and why that matters, I'll kind of explain here in a little bit. But they um, they they're they're not super easy to arrange. Because you have to you have to arrange them in a, in a way that they make both that may they meet both rails which is why I'm going to show you between these two chips I'm going to show you two different ways of installing them um, one where we're going to kind of diagonal lay them oh, it's starting to come up there we go you can see this one's starting to lift uh, at least on one side because they are plastic though sometimes the the part that lifts up is is going to be this this plastic element first and that's kind of a huge pain in the butt um, as this plastic starts to not really melt, but something something like it. So there you go. See that? And then right underneath. So that's just the plastic element of it, the cap uh, of the cap. <laughs> but now it's a little easier to heat because that plastic won't be dissipating uh, the heat as much. 
and we can kind of get under there. How much is this little heat gun? Uh, this hot air station cost me four, uh, 40 bucks, I think. 40, 45 on Amazon. Um, it was solid investment, man. It's super, super nice. Um, especially when it comes to getting, like, not these style of capacitors, but standard capacitors. Comes with three nozzles. Um, it got recommended to me by, um, I think it's on Voltar's list, actually. I'm not 100%. Can't remember 100%. But yeah, generally capacitors don't take this long to heat up. I also don't know if my gun is pushing out what it says it is. I have it plugged into this to a uh, the same thing as my soldering iron right now, so it's it's possible that I'm just using a jank ass uh, that it's unable to reach proper heat, which is fine. I have no problem doing it the uh, the less the less. Uh, textbook way the more the more da potentially damaging way but in most cases it's fine because of how many vias are available so you could always just scratch it up and uh and change those rails yeah, i'm about to just cook this bitch cook it straight up sorry if it's super loud i don't know what the what it sounds like on the uh i don't know what it sounds like on the on the microphone here which is right next to me it's actually pretty quiet as far as like what it does it's like a glorified hair dryer essentially I might use something a little bit more solid here real quick what are we baking uh, this is a yeah I mean 420 this is a, a NEC token capacitor I'm just trying to trying to nudge here and see if It'll give me anything. No, it doesn't look like it. These things are famously awful to take off, though, so not surprised. The way that I usually do it is not is not like this, because just it takes so long. But this is definitely the best if you're worried about cooking your... Uh, I mean, sorry, if you're worried about damaging your board, but... With braid, uh, yeah. So I'll, I'll clean the solder. I'll clean the pads. So one thing that people do, and um, I've kind of learned after doing a few of these, is that a lot of people will prep the, uh, they'll tin the solder pads, add it, adding a little bit more solder to them. But especially because of the, how you have to align the replacement capacitors on these rails, I, don't, I think it actually makes it more difficult. We're just gonna we're just gonna do it the old-fashioned way, which is way way easier. Fuck okay, it, I ain't got time for all this. Cool. So let me. Uh, let me see what is. The board has got a lot of heat on it. It sounds like it should be close. Obviously, I don't want to pry too hard. Oh, there we go. There we go. Don't grab it with your hands, Carrie. Come on. <laughs> there we go. So that's most of the capacitor there. Uh, I use leaded solder. Uh, I actually use, I think, a 60-40 mix. I can tell you here. Hold on one second. I use a uh, 6337. Uh, Non-leaded solder is uh, is not super recommended. Like it works for some some simple things, but I would definitely not um, I would definitely not use it for stuff like this. Let me go grab a uh, box cutter. Oops, and we'll show you the other method.
just missed it. This is where I keep all my tools. Alrighty, so now again, I can't specify this enough. This is not, um, this is not the recommended way to do it, um, but it is because of the state of these capacitors. Not as damaging as as you would think. Uh, you basically just get underneath here and you pop it up. Now you have to be careful that you are popping up. Warm. You are popping up just the capacitor because you don't want to you don't want to pull up the rails. However, the rails are in there pretty good. Um, I wouldn't say you have a whole lot of risk. And because most of this is is like a shitty plastic, uh, generally you're all right to do this. I might get the, I might hot air it again. This isn't the box cutter I usually use. This one's a little bit janky. Yeah, we'll just use hot air. And we'll keep going while it's, uh, while it's still warm. Yeah, exactly. The worst thing, the good thing is, and the reason why it doesn't matter a whole lot is because again, uh, where these rails are, there is vias that are connected to the same rail. So if you actually need to scratch out and carve new rails, it's very, very easy to do. So pulling up the pads is really not that big a deal or damaging them. Now granted, you don't want to do it. It's not like, uh, oh fuck it, just gung-ho this bad boy, but it can really, um, it can really be a, a super pain in the butt to uh, to have to scratch more rails in here, because um, then you have to find a new way for those already not the same size capacitors to fit and stuff like that. But yeah, these bad boys are on there good. Um, it's a pretty pretty common thing uh, once you get most of this bulk stuff pulled away you can usually just use a soldering iron to get the rest of it off off of the rails um, you can use a braided wick to um, to remove what solder or, or what uh yeah what bad old solder is still on there Sucker. This is still a big old glob of, uh... We're actually going to be, uh, so for the first one, for this one over here, we're going to, um... Sorry, camera's kind of iffy. For this first one over here, we're going to actually scratch in new rails here. And I'll show you why, and then on the other one we won't. And uh, it's just to give you an example for the two different ways you can do it. Neither one of them are, are more correct than the other. Um, it just kind of is what, what's easiest for you. Uh, obviously, scratching in new rails, or at least a little spot, is a little bit more work. But it makes, the, it, makes it to where you can let the uh, capacitors sit s straight up. As opposed to um, kind of diagonal, which is what we're going to have to do. Uh, considering that on one side, on one side, it's uh, it's gonna have two capacitors, which is gonna be kind of difficult to make fit. There we go, starting now. You can kind of see that rail in the middle kind of wants to pull up as well. That's what we want to avoid.
Sorry this is taking so long. It always does, though. This little uh, pair of flyers over here is very nice and sharp, but very not strong. Supply a little bit more direct heat. Um, but this uh, this center rail is actually part of the capacitor, so if it comes up, we're not. It's whatever. It'll just sometimes scratch up some of the silk screen off, and that's all I'm trying to avoid. And yeah, there you go. Now you're starting to see it pull. Um, I don't want it pulling. I don't want it messing with this uh, with this rail over here, though. Sorry, my big old noggin's in the way. Generally speaking, it'll just kind of peel off. And uh, twisting it is a good way to have that plastic break so that it doesn't... So you can kind of separate the points of where the capacitor is pulling on this rail. You see that? We don't want that to. Uh, we don't want that to pull it. So we'll just continue to uh, work this little guy a little bit, so we can at least get the top off here. Yeah, this, I think that it's just not plugged in um, to a source that's letting it get enough current. We'll turn it up a little bit more. It generally does take about five minutes to heat up the board to a point of where it's usable. Yeah, that bad boy wants to come up. No, sir. I could also use a different size tip. I just didn't feel like getting them out. So that's also partly laziness. Separate from the rail a little bit. There we go. Might have to uh, repair that rail a little afterwards, but that's okay. Now we got that side up. Just got to pull this one up. Now it is still kind of attached over here a little as well. Um, but if we can get that to separate, we'll just uh, use the soldering iron. What brand is this station? Uh, this is a Yahua SMD rework station. It's a, I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce it on account of I'm very uncultured, but it's a Y-I-H-U-A. Very cheap little soldering, I mean, a rework station you can get for like 45 bucks on Amazon. Uh, for just taking like basic SMD style capacitors off. It's uh, It definitely is pretty bitchin'. I might get the rest of this off with a soldering iron. Check out them hairs. Yeah, sorry. 
Show us how you compare handwriting. I don't. Yeah, we'll switch it over to the soldering iron. Just for this last little bit. Board is very warm, so the heat's obviously being dissipated quite well. Um, see the state of some of these? I might have to get in real close. But yeah, you can see this capacitor. It breaks and frays. Uh, wants to bring the rails with it when you stretch it. And you can realistically, like, install a new rail pretty easily. Yeah, this one's good, man. I, I can't, I don't have any real complaints. Um, one thing I should have done is added a little bit of flux. Let's kind of soften some of this area up. Um, this is a shitty, cheap little flux pin, um, but it does the job. We'll see just what of this we can actually pull up here. Because we can get underneath this side, it might be easier to go. Soldering iron out right now. Um, turn that bitch up a little. Loving this song. What's the title? Let me tell you. Oh, oops. Sorry. The song is called Zane Transition by Zane Alexander. Mm, let's see this cap. It's going to bring the rail with it. How much of the silk screen is it going to pull up, though? Is that's the question? Sorry. Actually, leave that on. Crank it up a bit. And I'm going to use um, some flush cutters to kind of get some of this bulk away, right quick. because it does look like it is pulling up the silk screen a little bit. Yeah, there you go. So it did, as you can see, pull up on the uh, on the rail here a little. We can actually, uh, we can do two things here. We can either sit that back down. Or, um, we can scratch out a new one. And when you scratch out a new one, it's pretty easy, especially in this area. Just hoping I could salvage what, what's here. Looks like maybe not. That's okay. Um, so when you scratch out a new one, you have to use these vias here. This entire section in the middle, just out of your hand to the board. This entire section in the middle, you can see how this is kind of pulled up. Let it focus. So it pulled up on this, which is okay. Uh, this entire section right here is all negative. 
So if we need to scratch out a little bit of the board until we get to some uh, some copper underneath and lay the, uh, the, the rail that way, we can. Um, but I was actually going to put it right here, scratch this off, and just do one on the bottom. Uh, and now that might be the most reasonable thing to do considering how nasty this thing was when it came off. Um, I'm going to get my wick out here in a second and pick up all this extra gunk. Make sure I flux it real nice. I actually prefer like the putty style flux um, that I have over here. This pen I got just it's nice, but it's it's kind of it's kind of a poor quality flux. Um, and having a decent quality flux actually makes a pretty considerable difference. You'd be you'd be surprised. Let's see if I can get this to separate here. There we go, finally. So there is the rail, which actually. It's still in pretty good shape. We can probably actually just sit it back down. But as you can see here, got a lot of extra gunk. Let's see if we can kind of heat some of that off. Um, generally, you can just pull it off with tweezers. Um, there you go. Anything that's like uh, bulk still on there which is you know some plastics and stuff like that they're still coming off and that happens pulling rails up um, having uh, lifting legs obviously it's stuff you try to avoid my very first uh, mod ever was an RGB mod on a Super Nintendo um, on a one chip a mini and bro I tell you what I pull I was doing an S video because you can RGB from one side of Voltar's uh, RGB bypass and you can S video and this is my own personal Super Nintendo so it's not a big deal or whatever but I straight up pulled the leg right off of the uh, of the chip because I was so nervous and uh, and at the time oops at the time I had no idea how to repair it did the music stop? Yeah, it did. Oops. So I just was like, "Fuck it, S video is not gonna have to, S video is not gonna work." So I just never had as so it still doesn't have S video. I could go back and since then I've done you know a handful more of those uh, of those RGB mods. It's one of the easier mods. Uh, it's a great starter one if you're like, I want to mod something, and you have a Super Nintendo sitting around. I would try that first for sure. I might put a little bit of uh, solder here just to see if I can clean some of this up. But the rail is actually in fine shape right here, which is primarily where I'll, I'll be attempting to connect. Let's see what I can. Uh, I might need to pull this closer to me for just a minute. Just gonna see where all the uh, plastic I'm pulling off still is. There we go. Much better. There we go. Way better. And uh, just to be safe, what we're gonna do here is we're going to just make sure that that, um, we're gonna use the meter just to make sure that it, we have, that trace isn't, I mean, um, that rail isn't so screwed up that we don't have um, continuity. No, we're good. Cool. Now we are going to, um, I guess we'll hot air the other side because I don't want to, um, Oh 
So usually 300 degrees Celsius is fine for this hot air station. I'm gonna kick it up to like 375 just because I was using 350 and it didn't seem like it was doing a whole lot. But we'll try the other one now. We'll start heating it up. Just because I don't want to put the capacitors down and then have to, um, I don't want to put the capacitors down and then have the hot air, you know, soften them up. Uh, so we'll do them all at once. And these, we'll, we'll do these two first. We'll at least put it back together enough to turn it on. And we'll kind of see where we're at. Realistically, you usually only have to do these two right away. These are the ones that go bad first. It's pretty typical. Um, one thing I might, now that I have this kind of an idea for how I can set this up, at least on my stream and everything, I might do um, a PS1, an ONE, like one of the little mini PS1s, a recapping of one of those, uh, just because those caps should be here this week. And it's a little bit like, because it's, I'm not speed running right now, I obviously can stop whenever I want and stuff like that. We can pick it up on another day and, and what have you. Whereas uh, when I'm doing speed runs, you're obviously a little bit more strapped for time. And the big thing is like, let's say right now I'm working on Beyond the Beyond. Um, which is a long run. And if I die at the, the spot where you usually die about an hour and a half in, then it's like, well, fuck, I don't have enough time to do, I don't have enough time to run it back. So maybe I'll get like a permanent one of these style cameras so I can do, I can take off the zip ties to the webcam I got going on right now. And, um, and we can figure it figure out a, a, a nice way to swap between them. Be like, all right, Beyond the Beyond didn't work out. We'll uh, see if we can salvage some stuff. Because lately I've been buying tons of broken crap and just trying to fix it. Just more so that because I'm not very good, obviously. Look at this, look at this fucking rail over here. Um, I'm not good and I would like to get better. And that's it's just fun to practice and stuff. A bit late to the party, doesn't the PS3 have a f uh, fucker of a ribbon cable in the way? Mmm... Ribbon cable in the way of in the way of what? When you're taking it apart? There we go. So again, the plastic piece generally comes off first. You can actually see on the insides of here where it looks like this cap has leaked a little bit. Or has a... Uh, it's kind of eroded or been damaged. So if I had to guess, I would say that this one is definitely a culprit. And when you take the PS3 apart, depending on how you take it apart, there's uh, there's only one real big ribbon cable, and that would be the one that connects the CD drive to the uh, to the board. And that goes in right up here. But no, I would actually say, aside from all the annoying screws, that the PS3 is... It's not difficult to take apart. It's just a lot of steps. That's really that's really the biggest gripe for me. Obviously, um, you know something like a Super Nintendo Mini, where it's got four screws. Something like that is you know pretty damn easy. If you have the right bit, I want to make that clear. You don't want to pry too much or you'll end up with a bad rail like we did over there. drag that out, solder out a little bit there. Me and my college buddies ran train on it <laughs> like a whole semester. Yeah, I mean, and what's sad is, so the big thing is like, the PS3 and the Xbox 360 were like huge steps up, right, in technology from the PS2. 
Um, I mean, the PS2 was an impressive ass system. Don't get me wrong. Even the uh, the Saturn and the Dreamcast were really impressive. They just were a little uh, clunky, I guess. Not super well marketed. But those were great systems. But the PS3 and the Xbox 360, just what they could do with the raw onboard power was a huge step up, right? But um, immediately we saw these issues with uh, heat, and primarily heat, because they you know, accounted for all this new raw power that they were going to have and, and capabilities, but that heat was something that they just didn't really plan for, which is why you saw the red ring of death, is why you saw the yellow light of death. Um, and obviously, quickly, Microsoft and Sony pushed out a bunch of revisions, uh, which is why with like the Slim and the Super Slim, you don't really see those same issues. Um, same thing with the Xbox. The later revisions of the Xbox 360 were were much, much better about, um, you know, heat and whatnot. Uh, unfortunately, though, for the PS3 community, those re those revisions meant less, um, meant less backwards compatibility. Uh, so eventually, this Model A PS3 has uh, actual PS2 hardware and chipsets in it. Whereas the uh, the model like the Chech E, the Chech G, um, C, all that stuff, they were, I know them all the way. So C, D, and E all emulate with chip with a chip, where A and B actually actually use hardware. So the difference is is that the PS2 library on the A and B has about 99% compatibility. Um, Whereas the C, D, and E, those were all a little bit, uh, uh, they dropped a little bit. So they only have about 75, 70 to 75 percent compatibility for the PS2 library. Seems like this bad boy's getting nice and warm here. Let's see what we can do. Mm-hmm. Scratch anything up too bad. Pull this bad boy out. Oh, there you go. It's starting to break apart now. Generally, if you can get some of these big pieces off, the rest of it starts to crumble. It's another thing that sucks about removing these is that they break into multiple pieces, generally. It would be super nice if it was just a standard cap. Everything came off in, in one big piece. And we're left with the same crappy piece we were left with last time, it looks like. Maybe cleared off this area a little bit better. This uh, middle rail is still in here, which means that uh, it's still kind of attached there. Yeah, now the PS3 is just, I mean, it's an amazing system. The issue is, my biggest problem with the PS3 is that the library doesn't really support. Um, I mean, let's. It's not a secret that Xbox 360 pretty much dominated that era of, gen of next gen consoles. Uh, and then the PS4 obviously dominates now, but a lot of it comes down to library. I was just never super blown away with the PS3's library. Now granted, it has a couple of the really great games on it, it does. Uh, I think Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch is one of the you know best games ever. But you look at sheer quantity of good games, and it just just didn't deliver. I love the PS3. I love it. It's my favorite console, which is why I spend all this time doing this dumb shit. When I could just as easily use the working ones I have.
But I love it. I love White Knight Chronicles. I love um, yeah, one and two. I love you know Nino Cooney. Obviously, is amazing. Yeah, they really did. They really did. I think the PS3 primarily existed on Call of Duty for a good while. I mean, it really did. Oops. I know that uh, all my friends at that age, that's what they fucked with. And they're like, yo, you got a PS3, you play Call of Duty? And I'm like, no, I don't, man. I play Final Fantasy XI on my PC like a fucking idiot. Wasted my life. There we go, starting to soften up a little. Don't want to pull too much because we got these little uh, chips over here. Same, yeah, I know, man. But man, I'll tell you what, I the amount of joy I had and the the amount of fun I had playing Final Fantasy XI for eleven years or whatever, or sorry, eight years. It's just, I don't think I've ever found that in another video game, dude. It's just, it was that good. This thing just doesn't feel like it's getting up to temp. And I don't want to pry off the rails again. Lost Odyssey. Yeah, okay, so Lost Odyssey Blue Dragon are stellar. Stellarly underrated as well. But keep in mind, that was just wasn't really the era of RPGs, right? So Xbox, you know, they only made a couple. And while they were good, people just, you know, part of the reason they didn't get the love they probably deserved. Because RPGs weren't really that big. There we go, that helps. Trying to come up here. My flush cutters. Come on, man, I would very much like to not pull up the rails again. There's this little piece of plastic that gets stuck in between here. There we go. That'll help a little bit there. Kind of get some heat underneath. Um, Blue Dragon is a stellar game. Lost Odyssey is a stellar game. I actually consider Lost Odyssey basically the Final Fantasy 13. I really do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um... And obviously for speedrunning, it's it's a little bit more advantageous um, to have it on the... There we go. To have it on the, uh, the marketplace for the Xbox One, just purely out of loads. Alright, we're going to clean some of this up with the fucking soldering iron, because that... 
That was just despicable. The hot air station I have at work, I guess works better. <laughs> this one's brand new. I literally just got this in today. Um, I use a, a similar one made by the same brand that's uh, 220 volts, something like that. So these definitely did not come out super pretty. They look bad now because uh, they came out pretty bad, to be completely honest. Again, completely amateur. I'm not great at this. So you can see they're just a little beat up, a little dirty. Uh, that, that one rail is broken there, but it's okay because we'll only use the other side of it that's not broken and we'll be all right. Uh, it's just a little bit of a pain. It's embarrassing more than anything. Blue Dragon is a stellar game. It's a stellar title. Um, and I really like the art style, you know? You know, for somebody who's as big a fan of Nino Kuni as I am, you know, I kind of like that, that... What is that, cell shaded? It's not exactly cell shaded, but something to that degree is 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 cool. I like that, um, that aspect of it. Oh, babe, are those pizza rolls? Hey, thanks. I'll take another cream soda for sure. I'm about to just cream it up. You're wired. Wired? I just took a nap. Thank you. She brought me pizza rolls, so I guess you could say things are getting pretty serious. Apply some of this no clean flux here, which you should still always clean for the record. I know that uh, a lot of times people are like, well, it says no clean, dude, and that's what I'm gonna do. But come on now, take a little bit more pride in your work. <laughs> I knew she was the one. Shit. It really is that simple sometimes, you know? Let me get the uh, uh, tweezers. See if I can force some of this gunk off here All right, come on buddy Let's see if we can heat up this rail kind of sit it back down a little bit there we go way better much better than the last one this one sat right back where it needed to in the future, I'll try not to lift it up as much. Um, generally, when I do these at work, no issue. Um, so I have to imagine my hot air station isn't getting as hot as it should be, but. As long as we have the continuity and what have you, and we're not shorting from one to the other, we should be completely all right. It does look like there is a bit of uh, gunk here still on these from the cap obviously it won't matter too much but I'd still like to get it off um, we're gonna be bypassing this bottom rail anyways Sit that bad boy. All right, we'll see what we can do with some alcohol and light brushing here. But I'll tell you what, man, and I know that I'm biased, and I'll admit that, but, dude, I sing the praises of Nino Cooney. I think it's one of the best games ever made, straight up. It's just such a damn good game. Writing, stellar. I know a lot of people gripe about the combat, and that's a fine gripe. I kind of like that style of combat. 
It's very similar to White Knight Chronicles, another PS3 title made by the same exact developers. There you go, as you can see, looking a lot cleaner right away. Tell you what though, I have to help myself with these pizza rolls, no shame. Now, <laughs> ignore my copious amounts of Dr. Pepper's, but one life lesson I will teach you guys, unrelated to this, is that my girlfriend, she doesn't cook pizza rolls as well as I do, because she uses foil so that she doesn't have to clean the pan afterwards, but they're still they're still doable and the the day i say hey you don't do a very good job is the day she stops making me pizza rolls so when she asks they were amazing remember that that's that's the move that's the move right there Um, before we move any forward, I just want to make sure I got continuity on all this. Got my fluke multimeter. It's a little bit of a flex. I stole it from my job, so it's like whatever. nice the move is buying an air fryer so I actually have an air fryer but it's very small or I used to no no Dylan did my roommate I don't have it um very small and it couldn't really fit a whole because I eat like 40 pizza rolls at a time So obviously, you just need to buy bigger ones. Whoops, I knew that was gonna happen. I'm get a few of these caps out. I, I dropped one on accident. Whoops. I am a mess. We're working very little space over here, so please bear with me. In the future, I'd like to add a, uh, I would like to put a work, like a little desk in my garage where I can stream from if I ever want to do this kind of stuff. Just because it would be nice to be able to put like some, you know, drawers and things like that for some of my tools and what have you, so. But these are uh, 470 microfarad capacitors, uh, 2.5 volts. Now, most people tell you to use 6.3. I've only ever used 6.3, um, but it was brought to my attention that these token NEC capacitors are actually only 2.3. Um, so it's uh, it should work fine. I mean, if it doesn't, it could be a number of things. But I'm, I'm, I'm confident that it should work. I bought a hundred of them, so. But on these little tantalum capacitors, I know it's going to be, I'm trying to see a way that I can make it really, really apparent because this is, um, I know it's not going to probably focus well enough. Better. 
So you see that little band at the top? I buy my nails, please uh, forgive me. You see that little band at the top? Now that's actually indicative of positive, uh, which is an important distinction to make. You can also flip it around and see that shape, uh, which is, which will let you know, because usually where you see the uh, flat side on an SMD capacitor, see that longer flat side on the bottom there, that means negative. And usually that's represented by a, uh, a black band on the top of the cap that means negative. Well these, these little tantalum caps, that band is actually on the positive side. Uh, you can't make it out super clear, but you can still see the band, I hope. So for this, what that will mean is that we will... Oh man, those came out just fucking dreadful. <laughs> Um, so we'll need to attach it to the positive rail and the negative rail. And the way that we're going to do that is by tilting it sideways so that it connects the two, you see, like that. Uh, however, what you can do is you can actually scratch off some of the, uh, some of these vias up here, oops, sorry, so that you can attach it to the negative rail in the center. And also, you know, a positive, so you can lay it like that. Uh, and that's what we're going to do on the bottom one down here. And we'll do it probably on the top up here. Just so I can show you guys how it works. But neither one of them is more correct than the other. Sometimes it's kind of a pain in the ass to fit those things crooked like that. Um, see if maybe I can zoom in. Yeah, I am kind of bummed at how much these lifted. The hot air station failed me, but it's okay. Hmm. See what we can iron out. There's almost no flux left on there, any or no uh, solder left on there anyways. I'm not gonna pre-tin them just because it makes it harder for these capacitors to sit flush. Also, what's going on, Chrono? How you doing, man? It's way easier if you have a squeezy bottle and you can squeeze fucking flux on there. This thing costs a couple of bucks. I really need to get a new one. It kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Again, real quickly, the side that has uh, that bar on it, that little line, that's gonna be your. Uh, that's gonna be your positive. And it's going to be your positive. So you've got to situate it in a way where you know you're not going to short. And the issue with that is that you, as you see on the bottom, these little metal rails here, these little connecting points that we're going to solder on, they sit, you know, there's a little bit of a gap, right? Right there. Hello. Now we need, hey, thank you so much, Passing Wind. And I'm, man, I, I can't stress this enough. I'm just a novice. There's gazillion people that are really really talented that I've learned from so this right here we have to make sure that this is sitting on the correct rail you can see how close these rails are together so we have to make sure that we're not accidentally leaving a little bit of space where this can touch both the positive and the bottom because it'll create a short so um, there's two ways to go about doing it now, the way that I think is probably the easiest is to take something with the ability to scratch. Um, this is kind of a dull cart, a box cutter, but it's the best thing I have right now, I think. Um, you can do it with a, a, a sharp enough knife or what have you. Um, but kind of have an idea for where you're going to place these. And you can actually um, line them up like that, you see? 
and that way you know for a fact you're touching negative. You shouldn't have any issue with the positive here because you're able to lay it straight instead of diagonally, which is a little bit uncomfortable. And then you can, all these vias up here are actually connected to the rail closest to it. So right here, all these little dots, they're little holes, little vias. And um, you can um, scratch some of this off and still be connected to the same rail as this positive. Uh, and then down here in the middle, all these vias connect to this negative and this negative pole. And then all these down here connect to these two positives as well. So um, generally speaking, I know that people are like, wow, you're going to dig into your board. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just because it makes it so much easier. Uh, you don't run the risk of... You don't run the risk of... Um, of shorting things like that but yeah like you like you saw me do right there you'll just scratch at it now generally speaking you want to go for the area where there's the less least amount of vias if you are doing this so if we wanted to connect it to this one we would connect to somewhere in here and then down here but we're actually gonna try to do it from here to there and here to there uh, we could bypass this pole entirely oh, there's still a little bit of shit on there and, uh, and scratch it into here, where you already see some of this copper is coming up. But I don't think we could do that twice, because uh, I don't think there's enough room. So let's take something with a little bit of a thin, sharp edge on it. Um, that won't work. What do I do with my little, my little trusty flathead? Did I learn most of this from consoles or Chuck E. Cheese rats? Um, a, a lot of it is my job, or at least it gave me the interest and the introductory amount of knowledge for me to understand when in the future I looked up stuff to know how to do it myself, if that makes sense. Um, now granted, having a loose understanding of, of how components and electronics and stuff like that work helps a lot when I oops, go on YouTube and I check out a you know, a video or, or what have you. And I'm like, oh, okay, I understand what he's talking about when he says this term or, or this term or, or whatever else. And uh, so I think it's both. I think it's both. So we will, let's try to scratch some of this up here. Should have probably done that before adding all the flux that I added. That's not going to be very good. I don't really have a great knife. Let's see what we got. I guess first what we'll do is try to do the, the top capacitors just to make sure that we get them to fit nice. So I'm going to try to arrange it here a little bit. Something like that. Should work pretty okay. But we have to make sure that a second one again will be able to fit as well. There's a bunch of really, really talented people on YouTube. I'm not sure I'm familiar with that one. But there's a lot of really awesome people I like to watch on YouTube um, that just do general repair stuff. There's one guy named like Odd Repair or Odd Fixing Odd or something like that. And uh, I mean, he is in depth. Instead of just like replacing a $10 Game Boy screen, he'll like completely restore and salvage the original. I'm like, damn, dude, that's a whole lot of work. <laughs> All right, so let's see what we can do here. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna just put a little baby amount of solder onto my iron. Right here, the tip, oh, it might be a little too hot. What do I have it at? Oh yeah, it is a little warm. When it starts spitting like that, generally means uh, that boy is a little toasty. And then I'm going to just come in it away so where I can hold this guy down. And let the flux do most of the work. Move this guy out of the way. hands. 
Something like that makes me feel a little bit better. You can get a nice little glob of solder in there. There we go. Kind of let it cool. We'll tap it just to make sure it is holding its place. Yep, as you can see, it's not moving. It's not going anywhere. It is ideal. Let's see if we can. A nice glob of solder here. Now that one is touching the vias, which is okay again. The fact that it's so slanted though is a little worrisome um, because it makes me worry that maybe this side up here is actually so close that it could be touching that. So let's, uh, a good way to tell is to sit this one directly on top of it, but upside down. And then you can get a better idea by twisting and saying, hmm, do I think that that is touching that pole up there? Probably. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna try to relocate that one. Which shouldn't be too difficult. Um, generally, you wanna have an idea for where it's sitting better I feel like a lot better about that it doesn't look like it moved much and it, it really didn't but I think that's in a better spot um, now I'm just gonna make sure that this pole does connect So right here, notice that I am getting a little bit of give from this top one. And the first one's always the hardest. Yeah, see that? The first one's always the hardest because um, it is really, really difficult to figure out just what is the correct angle with these things. Which is again why I said if you want to um, if you want to uh, scratch off some of that surface there I you know by all means it's not a bad way to do it because it gives you at least a little bit more freedom might actually need to clean up some of this flatten this back out some solder has gotten underneath there connection um, and now what we'll see is, is if we can actually just have it go straight to those vias um, it's not gonna be an amazing connection though uh, because I didn't scrape it away enough but we'll see what we'll see what happens it's always fun to play with uh, no ouch that's why I suggest that you uh, I just burnt the heck out of myself classic it's not a it's not a repair job unless you burn yourself at least once Cool, so we'll try it the second way then. There we go. Probably nuke that capacitor as well. Always buy extras, never buy just the exact amount. It's pretty common that you'll, uh, some, are, some just come in bad. The dog really wants in here because she knows I have food. All right, again, I'm gonna pull out one of these. And I'm just gonna scrape away, not crazy hard. But just enough to where you can start to see, you can see that silk screen start to come up. 
And before long, under that silk screen, you'll find the copper that you're looking for. You're starting to see that copper kind of come out, peek out there. So we'll do a little, uh, this toothbrush has isopropyl alcohol on it. And now you can kind of see where right here we have that, that you can see that orange patch. Yep, there you go. See that copper now is, is visible. We can just attach one of our capacitor on the positive end, on its positive pole, to that piece. Um, and the best way to do that is actually to tin it. So we're going to dab it with a little bit of uh, a flux there. Then we're gonna come over here. Let's see if we can just put some solder down on that spot. If, uh, if the solder's not sticking to it, there we go, see how it's stuck a little beaded. If the solder's not sticking to it, then that generally means that uh, you haven't scratched the silk screen enough and you need to go just a little bit deeper. But again, it's always best to check first Uh, you know, scratch a little, check, scratch a little, check. You don't want to dig too deep into those, to those, uh, to those vias there. Where is my, uh, it's also wise to close your, uh, your box cutter when you're done with it. <laughs> oh, damn, this thing is running hot. There we go. Bring it back down to reality there a little bit. So we're just gonna move this so that it touches this pole right here. The flux is making it a little sticky. Um, I might use a new capacitor just because I uh, fumbled around with this one for a little bit. And it should be easy, at least easier, to position uh, this capacitor. Oh stick considering that you can have it sit up and down as opposed to having to caddy corner it maybe a little bit of flux but again once you get the first one on the others come a lot easier because you don't have to you're not fighting for space oh I love this song Put a little bit more solder on our, uh, our tip here. Oh, the flux makes the stuff a little sticky, so. I don't want to straighten that out, so. Move it around just a tad. Again, before I, uh, you want to make sure you get this right, otherwise you do all this for nothing. So before I move forward, I'm going to take another capacitor and I'm gonna put it upside down the exact same way, just so I can see kind of an idea for where those pads are and whether or not I think that that pad is high enough up for it to short. Um, I would say probably not, but to be safe, we'll slide it down just a tad, doesn't hurt. like that. 
something like that just definitely makes you feel a little bit better. So you're not wasting your time. Just so I can give you guys a better look, I'm gonna turn this around. And we're going to uh, get underneath it where we've already laid that pre-existing solder. Press down, and that should be that. Give it a little shake. Not going anywhere. Uh, and again, just to be safe, it's always good practice to take a good cap, face it upside down. That way, we just have some peace of mind about like knowing whether or not it's going to short. So that comes down to about right here. So that should be well within uh, the middle of the rail there. So what we're going to do is we're going to repeat that same process. Did I bake the board? I did not. I did not. Um, I used the hot air station to remove the token caps, which is why you can see I pulled up a rail um, on accident there. But that's okay. There is plenty of uh, space for you to scratch and kind of create your own little spots. Oh, did I lose that cap? There it is. So again, we're gonna do the scratch method. And the reason I do this is obvious. It's a little bit more reasonable. And um, you actually don't have to do it twice. Because you see there, now we have a little bit more room to play with. Uh, so you don't have to lay them both the exact same way. Um, I think we'll actually potentially do it like that again. Put a cap on there upside down the same way, just to have an idea for kind of where those connectors are. So that we're not getting a short. So maybe something like right around, right around there would be a little safer. That seems like a good bet. We already should have some no clean flux on there still, so we'll apply a little bit of a uh, solder to our iron tip. Come down here, press on this just to hold it. Wiggle it around a little bit so that we feel good about it. Maybe we need a little bit more. This is a pretty tasty jam as well. We'll make sure that it has good connection. I don't know if it's uh That's why you tr that's why you figure it out. <laughs> so what we're gonna try to do here is get a little under there. Um Big old blob. That's okay. Yeah, I love I love synthwave music, especially for when I'm just kind of chilling. Again, we'll just give it another little light tug. Not enough to damage or pull up anything, just enough to tell whether or not it's uh, it's connected there. Still doesn't seem to be. So what we're gonna do is uh, relocate this back side. A little bit. We'll go back over this. Um, I noticed that I didn't have my my wick, my solder wick. So I've had to just kind of get creative a little bit here. We can kind of sit this bad boy here. A little bit more flux in there now that I've kind of come back and forth. Might even lay a little bit of flux on this top rail just to, I mean, sorry, a little bit of solder. This top rail. So not too much, but. There we go. 
Yeah, they're significantly smaller. Significantly smaller. Generally, I don't like to uh, pre-solder the uh, the rails like that. But it should help us make a way better connection right away. Eh. Need a better angle. Screw it. We'll go back to the uh, the good old fashioned strat. Believe it or not, that's that was a little bit warm, a little toasty. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna scrape again. Just seems to be the fastest way to do this. Where is my box cutter? Drown it in tin. So we're gonna try to give these guys room to breathe. Um, again, like I said last time, just scratch up here. Not with too much pressure. You don't want to, uh, you know, destroy these vias. Just enough to kind of wear that silk screen away. And you'll know it's a decent, you'll know it's a good enough amount once you start to see that copper come through there. And then get a little, go to your toothbrush, your IPA toothbrush. Just kind of give it a little wipe. Might need a little bit more. Give it a little wipe here. Doesn't hurt to clean up some of that flux that I kind of left all over the place. See, might not be enough uh, copper coming through, so we'll keep going. We'd like to have like a nice little patch. Just enough so that the uh, when we do lay flux down here in a second that we uh, that we are able to get some uh, some of that solder to stick to it and again if the solder is not having a kind of a hard time sticking to it means you probably didn't scratch deep enough um, We should probably afford to go a little bit deeper. See what we can get up here. So it sure is a pain. I don't have my wick now because I got a lot of solder going on over here. That's all right. We'll make do. So, again, get a little bit more serious with the scratching. on here. There we go. That's a little bit better of a spread. And they, that way we're not going to be super worried about um, our connection being kind of light. So again, the positive is going to be the uh, the positive is going to be the side width 
the bar across it on these caps. Cool, cool. Turn this bad boy back around. Not to be childish, but uh... Stick here. Okay. It's at least stuck on that side. We'll come and readdress this side now. And if we gotta add a little glob there, it won't hurt. Make sure that. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna give it a light tug from both sides. It's connected well there. Well there. So that's it. It's not pretty. That's all we're gonna do on that side. Now we're gonna move to the bottom where I butchered this rail. And we're gonna scratch out the vias down here this time. And that'll allow us to let these uh, to sit flush. Or to sit uh, up and down as opposed to catty corner. Somebody asked me earlier if these caps are a significant downsize in the ones that were in there previously. And uh, the answer is yes. So roughly that size is, uh, is how big the first ones were. Again, take a little bit of flux, or a little bit of IPA here, clean that contact up. I don't know if it's going to focus that close. There we go, that's a little better. And then we will uh, dab a little bit of flux on here. I'm going to use some of this kind of flux because I like it. My pen is kind of fucking me up today, so. We're going to. Yeah, and the speedrun of this. This is definitely not a speedrun. I've not done this quickly. Generally, when I do it by myself off stream, the best few times that I've done this, it's been significantly faster. It's a good enough glob there. I want to kind of even this piece out down here as well, though, so that we, uh, so that it does sit a little bit more flush. Obviously, the more solder we have on here, it's going to make it uh, sit a little higher. So we should be able to have it connect to this pole here. That's uh, not beat to shit. <laughs> At least the side that's not beat to shit. This rail. in a cap. I wonder what it is. Oh, it's over here. We, we'll throw that one away, just because that was the original test dummy. So again, um, the side with this band, that's going to be your top. Oops. That's going to be your positive. 
Now keep in mind, that means the negative poles are these ones in the middle. So we're actually going to have to flip it from the way that it was initially. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to jostle the camera there. We're going to come down here, lift it up. Try to get a decent amount. Oops. Decent little connection there. Give it a little uh, nudge. It's at least holding in its place. And that's what's most important. Oh, I forgot she brought me these pizza rolls. And then on this side, we can douse it a little bit more. I might even scratch up. Right there a little bit. Give me a little better grip. Since that, uh, I did mess up that rail so badly. So we're gonna give a little tug. Looks like it's on there pretty, pretty damn well. Cool, which means we can move on to putting three on this side. Sorry, I keep bumping the camera. I apologize. I have it really close. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the tunes. Uh, 40. And we're down to probably just 8. Again, we're just gonna scratch. It was faster, less headache. Now on this side, we're gonna put two on the bottom. Now, uh, if I had a fiberglass pen, it would be way easier to do what I'm doing with the scratch and the silk screen off of these vias. But um, my lazy ass doesn't ever buy shit until I realize that I need it and I'm like, wow. Would have been really useful to have and then I order it. So yeah. But yeah, if you have a fiberglass pen, it would make uh, getting this Silk screen off very, very, very quick, very easy. Again, you don't want to dig too deep because you don't want to fuck these vias up. It shouldn't matter, but just gonna take your time. Get at it with some IPA toothbrush. You know the drill. There should be enough space. We'll hit it with a little flux. Boom, 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 boom. Again, if the flux is, I mean, if the solder is having a hard time connecting, you didn't go deep enough. Scratch it a little bit more. Looks like we're having no, no issue this time getting a little nice little bit of solder. Cool. So we'll go ahead and, uh, well, we'll scratch out the middle one as well, or the top one as well. And I'm gonna try to scratch it over here where there's not um, as many vias. Just because it's way easier. Alrighty. Again, just try to put a little solder on there. If it doesn't stick, you gotta go a little deeper. A dental pick, yeah, or a uh, the big one that's really helpful is uh, 
obviously a fiberglass pen, but uh, a scalpel. A scalpel really helps as well. A scalpel is really useful to get these tokens off to begin with. Um, so that's something I'll probably be picking up in the future. Granted, uh, again, I can't stress this enough, I'm amateur, not a pro, not a career modder, nothing like that. I'm just still learning. So we're learning, we're here learning together. This is not meant to be a let me teach you because I'm the master kind of stream, so. Again, very important, make sure the positive is going to the positive, otherwise you're gonna have a bad time. Yeah, yeah, um, there is actually some mods that like I've been told you can't even really do without some kind of magnifying camera or glasses or what have you. Nothing I've ever done is that exotic, so. flux this out a little bit more yeah. I'll tell you what that fuckers hot <laughs> go figure crazy how nature do that dab a little flux on this bad boy dab a little flux on this bad boy we'll even dab a little flux on this bad boy Not too much though, because we don't want it to. Uh, we don't want it to bridge. Just a little some some. Cute. Now the uh, the the, the uh, solder should bond a lot better with a little bit of flux on it. You should be able to hear it. Well, no, it's more like a hiss, actually. <laughs> hmm. Okay. We don't want to stick, then we're just gonna brute force it by adding a just a, a booty load of solder right here. Big old solder lump. Uh, it's kind of becoming difficult because this flux has made it so sticky. In my mind, I was like, it's gonna burn you, and I was like, nah, dude, I can withstand it. Just for a second. I was wrong. There we go. Not so bad. Wasn't fast, but it's okay. Oh, that one went on way better. Again, we're gonna just give it a little wiggle here. Uh, I figure this is fun for you, right? Yeah, I love it, I love it. That's why I keep buying shitty old consoles that are broken, or broken consoles. Okay, yeah, not a good enough connection there. You see how it comes loose. Um, and just trying to get better, you know, trying to learn. Improve my soldering, improve my uh, my overall knowledge, things like that. 
But yeah, I have a ton of fun. We're gonna carve that out just to give it a little bit more uh, spot to grip with our solder. That sounds like the sound of connection. Let's hope. Come over here, just give it a little wiggle waggle. Ooh, much better, much better. All right, perfect. So we will move on to the next capacity. Now Grant, uh, remember again, we will be doing six of these total. So we only have two more left and then we'll put the PlayStation back together. Yeah, I've been buying a lot. <laughs> Um, but because I've been getting them at such good deals, dude, I'm like, oh, I'd be stupid to pass up that deal. And my girlfriend's over here just like, she doesn't really know because they all look the same. And I'm like, she's like, is this a seventh PS2? I'm like, no, 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 that would be crazy. Can't get a really great grip with these. <laughs> I'm buzzled. Uh, if I get it working, I don't know. I mean, you can buy these broken PS2s for about 30 bucks or so. And then I imagine I could sell it for at least double. At least double that. better connection here. Nice. Again, let's give it a little wiggle waggle, a little tap. Not going anywhere. Yeah, and I have four of them, so eventually I need to start reselling them, right? My issue is I'm so inexperienced with modding they're like look at this right i feel bad if i sold this to somebody for 60 70 bucks because i'm like yeah it's an ugly i did an ugly job <laughs> so i'm not super proud of the work so i'd hate to sell it to somebody and then in a year be like what the fuck i opened it up and people laughed at me <laughs> it's true they don't have to know but i would know you know okay yeah it's not gonna work a little scritchy scratch. Uh, is this one of, yes. So uh, this is a Model A. And the Model A actually has PS2 chipsets on it. Uh, so the Model A and B, their compatibility with the PS2 library is about 99%. Uh, models C, D, E, F are backwards compatible as well, but they use an emulation chip and the uh, compatibility with the PS2 library is only about 70%. So the Model A and B are like the premier, the collectors, the 60 gigs. Um, my favorite is actually the Model E, which I have one of. Um, just because the emulation chip on that revision is so good that it saves a lot of load times in PS2 games. As a result though, a lot of speedrun communities have banned it. Rightfully so. But the Model E is the backwards compatible revision I've had the least issues with ever. I've never heard of... Not to the same degree, like Model A's are fucking all over the place. Because they all go bad, because they had such bad heat issues. And why? Well, it turns out when you put a PS2 inside of a PS3, it gets a little warm. It's 
A little bit more bulb than I'd care for, but gotta make sure it gotta make sure it sticks. Nope. That's why we check. I thought about maybe giving one away at limit break, like for a prize or whatever, just because it's free at that point. There we go. So again, come over here, give it a little tippy tap. It's nice and sturdy, nice and sturdy hold there. We're going to flex this side. And, uh... Again, where did that cap go? Okay. Again, we want to make sure that this banded side is on the top. So let's flip it around one more time. And now we need the banded side to face upwards. I didn't get through a lot of the silk screen on this side, so I'm not surprised it's not making an amazing connection. Um, also doesn't help that this cap is kind of lumpy. Oh, this is the one I was gonna not use. That's why. Throw it in the trash. I actually have a little trash box that I like to. It makes me insane if I'm working on this stuff for an hour or two, which, you know, somebody of my low skill level, that's what it easily takes. And, and I eventually I get so inundated with just trash everywhere. Does it matter where you're placing them along the rail? No, as long as, um, as long as they are still positive and negative. That's what matters. Doesn't matter where you put them or even the direction you put them. Um, like you can make them diagonal, you can make them sit this way straight up like I'm doing here as long as they're touching the correct poles uh, positive being on the outside negative being on the inside um, and uh, granted there is a uh, there's eight different of these NEC token capacitors and we've just done two we're gonna put it back together uh, hope that it works if it does dope and we'll leave it like that now if I were to do it, if I were to make the system uh, in a way that I would sell it to somebody, I would just do all eight uh, chips. So what's eight times three? Twenty-four capacitors. I would do all of them just so that it, you know, whoever I'm selling it to doesn't run that risk. Um, granted, for being on stream and just testing it out, I don't want to have you guys sit here for a fucking five-hour ordeal. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna find a good spot for it. That one seems pretty dang good. I don't have solder. Maybe a little bit more here. Let's see if I can reposition this guy to the back a little bit. Let's see what we got. Oh, um, I might actually have been moved too far forward. I was like, cool, man. I got him all the way up here. But I think it's actually going to short on that pole. 
on that rail rather. There you go. I can see that bridge. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Now he's a little too far back. Or somewhere was a happy medium. Let's see if we can slide him up just a, a smidge. Might not be making contact at all now, though. I don't know. It's all right. It's all right. A little bit more flux. And that should be it, ladies and gentlemen. We should be good. Now we can go back into reconstruction. Just gonna make sure that this underside is staying connected. Nope. Gotta be sure. We could have put it all back together and just not. Might need to, uh... Wander there. Alrighty, we are in business. My hands are too, dude, I, I'm not gonna lie to you, I was talking about it earlier. The first uh, mod I ever did was an RGB on my own SNES Mini. I actually have it right here. It was an RGB mod on my, my own SNES Mini, you know, so whatever. And, um, and bro, I fucking botched it. <laughs> it, was, it didn't come out great. And it's not a difficult mod. But um, coming from working with animatronics and the stuff at Chuck E. Cheese that I'm familiar with, I wasn't ready for like the micro scale of stuff like this. Like this stuff is so small. I went from wires that were, you know, pretty thick to when I saw the little tiny wires I needed for the Super Nintendo, I was like, holy shit, this is, cr this is way, and I, was sh I shook so much, I ended up pulling a leg up. Eventually, though, after a good deal of time, I got it. I got it to work, and I love my. And it's beautiful, beautiful mod. It's trial and error, though. It really is. Okay, right, so now that we have this ugly but working, we're going to. Uh, and if it didn't work, if this isn't what does it. No big. We'll uh, probably do another stream later this week where we uh, we try again. Next, what we want to do though is we want to clean this. So we're going to take uh, some IPA. We're just going to get at this. Clean up a lot of this uh, thermal paste off of these heat sinks here. Now Sony famously used a very poor quality um, but non-conductive thermal paste when they uh, when they made the when they manufactured the PS3. So um, even if your PS3 is working fine you could probably do with some uh, thermal paste. I've also heard that if you use, if you put uh, custom firmware, CFW, 
on your PS3 that you can adjust. You can see internal temps. You can adjust fan speed, stuff like that. Um, I'm not super familiar because I don't put custom firmware on shit. But, um, you know, that's an option if you're curious. I can't imagine it's difficult. Custom firmware for stuff has come a long way to where you can usually just go to a browser on the console you're, mo you're modifying and it'll run its own, like, self-install launcher. Um, I'm not, you know, I can't speak for it because I haven't done it myself, but something like that. So if you are worried, if you have one of these older ones and that's something you're interested in doing, maybe consider checking it out. Alrighty, so we would be, um, you know, those will make contact with those too, with this GPU on the side, the CPU on the side. All of this, um, and one thing that's a good way to tell just how bad the, the thermal paste is, is if you feel it, and it feels kind of, if it like cracks and crumbles right away and it's very brittle and dry, bad. <laughs> that's bad. Um, but if, it, if it's got a little bit of softness to it, it means that it's not in too bad a shape. Uh, that one honestly wasn't that bad. Slide this bad boy back in here. One thing to keep in mind is that these capacitors might not sit exactly flush since they are not the same size as the original. Move this stuff out of the way. Slide that there. I had to pull this away just because it has to be lined up correctly. There we go. Perfect. So as you can see, not sitting exactly flush. There we go. That's better. What you can do is put some non-conductive tape. Um, I'm going to consider put some electrical tape over that. Just so that, I mean, the capacitors are touching this metal here, which is not a big deal, but... Um, by laying them this way, there's less chance for a short anyway, so. So we'll move forward. I'm gonna get the big Ben out here. Um, a good rule of thumb is to, you know, remember where the USBs are, right here. Oh, that's another thing. Um, so if you're ever curious, how can I identify a backwards compatible PS3? If you're, um, if remembering the different revisions that I've spoke about is, is too much to remember and, and you can't remember that, uh, then a really, really simple way to do it is just to see if there's four USB ports, it's backwards compatible. It doesn't mean it's a Model A, just means it's backwards compatible for the PS2. Um, if it is a, if it has two USB ports, it means it no longer is because there was revisions of the fat PS2 or a fat PS3 rather, that were uh, that were you know obviously fat, but still not backwards compatible. Here, we're gonna do it like this. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate it, Kyan. How you doing today? Trying to make sure I get everything to fit. Um, Now on this bottom side, we're gonna do the thermal paste. Now there's a couple different schools of thought when it comes to thermal paste. Different ways to spread it, where people swear that like, there's a better, oops, that some, <laughs> that some ways are better than others. Um, it really just comes down to preference. I prefer to do mine and I'll show you how. There's a neat little video I watched a while back. 
First you want to kind of find where this is going to sit and how so that you can be sure once you have your thermal paste applied that you're only pressing down on it once. Keep in mind we do have the battery that we'll uh, clip back into there like this. We'll do that after we uh, re-secure this. So let's pop this bad boy back out so we make sure we can do it right. Um, get the thermal paste out. Now you don't want to use a ton. Don't want to use a ton. But you just, uh, I like to do what looks like a little X. Hopefully mine's not dried out. Yeah, but it was camped the whole time. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. So I like to do a little X here. Because uh, there was a video I watched once where it kind of talked about the different ways of applying thermal paste. Now this is non-conductive so that if it does pour over the sides here, shouldn't be a big deal. But in the test, they found that the X actually spread the most even with the least amount of air seeping in. So once that's laid down, kind of line it up in your head here. How right, are you gonna have it? I right, bet. Can I have an idea for it? And when you press, press down all the way. Commit to it. You know what I'm saying? Don't pussyfoot around it. And that should be good. You should be able to. Be able to resecure here. Um, what was I doing next? Oh yeah, this bad boy. Reapply the fan. Now remember what I said when I took the fan off. There's only one correct way for the fan to go back on. It'll sit in a place like that. Reconnect this Molex over here. Sorry. Reconnect this Molex here. Come over here. Reconnect this bad boy. Again, another Molex. Now, uh, I mentioned earlier that sometimes you could pull that whole connector out on accident. If that's the case, just line it up and put the, them both back in there. There'll be two prongs sticking out. Easy, not a big deal. Um, that's only one of the two. Where did the other one go? That's fucking annoying. Alrighty. I'm just gonna put these bad boys back in there. Uh, one really good rule of thumb that I learned from Voltar, actually, is if you turn your screw driver backwards, as if you were loosening it, you'll hear it pop. Like that. And then it will, uh, that basically is where the threads are matching to where the pre-existing threads are. And it gives you a very, very, here, listen, we'll do it again. It allows you to not have to force the screws in. So very gently, you can see I'm just using two fingers here. hear it pop and then I can literally screw it back in as easy as look how little pressure I'm putting as it screws back in that's because the threads are perfectly matched uh, which is a really neat trick that, uh, that I picked up off Voltar it's pretty neat little I never really thought about it or paid much attention to it 
Now granted, most screws aren't gonna give you a whole lot of resistance, but you gotta think about the amount of wear and tear that you put into onto th threads as you go back and forth, back and forth. It is a thing. It is a thing. It is very good, I like it a lot. Looks like I'm missing one of my, uh... oh there it is. I usually do a pretty good job of containing my screws. Again, I didn't have one today. My favorite way to contain screws is to get um, is to get an ice cube tray. Super, super handy because you can put the different size screws in every single little ice cube tray element. Right? That's my that's my suggested way of doing it. So when we put it all back in, you can do it a couple different ways. I'm gonna try to do it all at once. Worst case scenario, it doesn't work out. Uh, this is what I was worried about, yeah. You don't want the uh, heat sink to separate. Because of all that good, good thermal paste we just put in there, right? have to pop it on here and keep in mind that some of this does have to slide under this relay bar oh no come on buddy be very difficult so you do have to go at kind of an angle here There we go. That will give me enough time to kind of move around, make sure everything's lined up. Cool. Oh no. Looks like the heat sink separated right as I shook it. It's okay, we'll pick it back up. really quick just to make sure that heat sink goes back. And we might have to clean up some thermal paste. That's all right. It's my fault for trying it that way. I could have done it. But one thing we can do now Can I get an idea for how much thermal paste we put on there and whether or not it was enough? It's my fault. I should have uh, put the relay bar on first, but I was being lazy because I already put the relay bar back into the uh, into the PlayStation, into the shell rather. Laziness wins again, or loses, I guess technically. Um, I need this to nice cool well now we can assess because we'll have to reapply it because of how bad I fucked it up now we can reassess the amount of thermal paste we put on really good amount on this side um, oh yeah that's fine Oh, bummer. It's probably good. Hey, man, I appreciate that. Thank you, expert. Uh, so again, don't be lazy. <laughs> uh, you just put the relay bar. You can actually, if it's easier, slide this out. Uh, but you shouldn't have to. So just take this. And kind of just usually it's easier to go from the top and then just 
you'll hear it kind of snap into place there. Uh, yeah. Looks good, looks good. Whoops. I only have so much space on my legs. <laughs> oh no, my camera. There you go. Oh no, we made it the whole stream and now it's fucked. All right, so flip it over. Set it down in there. This little bad boy likes to slide out. That's okay. The biggest thing is just kind of making sure the heat sink stays where it needs to be. Cool, and we're good. Uh, now we're gonna reapply all this stuff. We'll just do it real quick. Uh, again, a really nice trick for these, these little heat sink covers here, which will again only go in one way, is to either put something right here in the center that creates pressure so that underneath this, um, it pushes up onto the board right, which um, creates on the opposite side of that board a better seal between that GPU and CPU in that heat sink. So uh, that's something you can do. You can also put washers right here to kind of create that same amount of pressure. Um, we're just going to be putting it back together real quick just to make sure that it works. Uh, but you might feel like, wow, these things really got to screw in pretty dip hard. Um, yeah, that's for a good reason. That's because it's pushing all of that pressure from that, that hinge style uh, piece of metal here. And uh, that's uh, all that pressure is pushing up on that board in an effort to make a better seal for that heat sink. And again, if the yellow light persists, if we didn't do it, that's okay. Um, we'll just have to switch to the next two capacitors on the board and we'll work our way down until we figure it out. No, uh, no big. So next we're going to drop the power supply back in here. Now again, there is uh, these two little ports right here, right? And they need to line up with this, which tells me that it needs to go this way. Generally, if you find those, uh, that plug, make sure it's not sitting flush on it. Yeah, there you go. This uh, ground cord in the back likes to block it. And it should just snap into place pretty easy. Again, remember I said at the beginning I prefer to pull the Molex from here as opposed to here. Uh, and the reason for that is that it's easier to keep track of. <laughs> I mean, that's about it. Um, I'm going to put the ground cable in first. Just because it's a little bit easier. I think it goes down here. I can slip it under there, but Ooh, maybe I can. That's pretty nifty. Nice. So as you see, I was able to slide this ground cable in right under there. Prevents obstruction from up here. That's pretty nice. That's cool. Um, again, the ones for your ground and your power supply, they're going to usually look like this. They need that extra washer to kind of flush out that connection. Generally, most of the stuff that's on the board for the Super, I mean the Super Nintendo, for the PS3 is um, universal, screw-wise. However, um, there are some like that screw that I just did for that ground, and uh, and the threaded ones up here for the that the board that controls the on and off and eject. So once you got all that in here, you can actually tuck these wires underneath here, which should give you space to screw all this back in. Um, I'm gonna actually turn around and do this piece next, where the power goes. See if I can 
and that looks like this right here. Now there is a little Molex right here. I'm just going to where this yellow side is. Got to make sure that it always faces towards you. Now, generally speaking, you can um, you can detach this this connector any way you'd like, whether it be from up here or down there. Again, I kind of prefer to do it from down here, purely out of preference because it means it's less stuff I gotta keep track of. Now again, twirl it backwards so you hear it click. You'll feel it, even if you don't hear it. And then it should allow you to, with almost no effort whatsoever, put, these, put the screw in. Now these are a bit heavier threaded, so it's all right. That's just a nice rule of thumb, especially on like something like the Super Nintendo, uh, where the threads are a little bit more fragile, the shells are a little bit more fragile. So here's your power, here's your eject, back in business. Um, we have to do this, anchor this down before we put the card reader back on. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I got those specialized screws out. The Wi-Fi board right here that goes under the card reader. Let's get the screws out. We're not going to put the whole lid back on, simply because it's not necessary. Now the ones that attach the, uh, I don't know if you can tell, they're almost rounded at the tip. You See how it's kind of rounded there at the very end? as opposed to ones of a similar size, like these. You can see the threads are completely different. It's just easy to remember. If you're like kind of confused, that's a good way to, uh, that's a good way to double check. Uh, we actually probably don't even need to do all this if we want to test it, but might as well. Just for the funsies, the complete, the, uh, the completism. I don't know if that's word or not. Definitely not a word. <laughs> Completionist? Sure. Again, we are missing, uh, right here goes your little Bluetooth antenna. So I'll have to find what I did with that. Usually didn't go far. But that Bluetooth antenna has to attach to the Wi-Fi board. Uh, so you have to make sure that you do that, obviously, before you put the card readers back on. Yeah, I mean, worst case scenario, it doesn't work and we just have to do the next two chips. Uh, I like to do each one at a time until I isolate it. That way that I don't spend here just doing five hours worth of chips or something that doesn't have anything wrong with it. But again, if I was going to sell it or something like that, then I would just do all the chips ahead of time anyway. Bluetooth antenna, where you at? It's a little guy. Here it is. Right there. Uh, so you know that if, if there is an issue with your controllers all of a sudden, let's say you take this apart, you clean it, and then all of a sudden you, you're having real, like your controllers won't stay connected wirelessly. That means that you probably forgot to attach this to the Wi-Fi board correctly. Um, or this board right here is going bad. So that if, if you're ever noticing like a Bluetooth connectivity issue, that's generally the place to start. Uh, next up will be the Wi-Fi board here. Now this ribbon cable underneath does slide in here. Um, it's hard to see, I'll lift it up. But you see this right here, there's like a little brown slat. You pull it up. And it'll allow this to slide in real, real easy. Super, super simple. And then you, uh, you just push that slat back down, preferably with like, you can do it with your fingers. This one was really easy to get up, but I push it down with a little uh, screwdriver or something. And this bad boy should sit right here. Uh, generally with no issue. Looks like he's a little misshapen here. Ah, oh, there we go. Perfect. 
Now the Bluetooth antenna will go into this tiny little circular plug right here. But first we're gonna plug it, screw it all back in. Moment of truth. Okay, it might not work, it really might. Uh, it might not, and that's okay. It just means we have to do the next two capacitors. I just didn't have time to do them all tonight, so it's not a big deal. And if it does work, cool, I'm a god. <laughs> Um, let me take a look at the card reader first. I can't remember if the card reader uses those. I know it uses those. So now that sits flush up there like that. So we will put screws in there. The fuck is that? Oh, that's the stupid Torx bit that covers the sh that keeps the shell closed. All right. Now, uh, if you ever have somebody work on your system for you, I suggest telling them, "Hey, swap the Torx bit out for a Phillips head," and it's so much easier to get into your own console from that point forward. That's what I'll be doing here today. Uh, so this piece of tape obviously goes right there. It's not necessary. Just slide this bad boy back in. Lift that little lip up. Slides in real nice. Make sure it gets in there all the way. Uh, what am I screwing in? Doesn't matter. Close it. Oh, duh, I forgot to attach the Bluetooth antenna. Which generally I'd like to have it under this ribbon cable here. But it goes on really easy. You just line it up, push, pops right in. Put a couple screws in this bad boy. Now, um, oftentimes this comes, this Bluetooth antenna comes taped to the side here. It's not really important. Um, just kind of tuck it out of the way. Alrighty. So we're gonna slide this bad boy in here. Now again, this has a big ribbon cable here. You just need to lift up this little lip. Uh, slide it in here. You can kind of be a little, you can be a little bit more aggressive with this cable. It's pretty well protected. It's pretty thick. Should slide in pretty nice. You'll you'll have an idea when you know it's in there well, because uh, there's a little black line on that specifically, and um, it, once it goes all the way into the black line, we know that it's on there correctly. And we're gonna turn it around, make sure that we're not missing anything. Um, we didn't screw obviously the board all the way down because we'll do that later. First. This will be the moment of truth. Let's see if we can get it to work. The issue we were having, let me remind you, was um, that the yellow light of death, where you plug it in, you boot it up, it, it runs for a quick second, and then it immediately goes back to, it blinks yellow, whoops. It blinks yellow and then goes back to red. So we will see whether or not that issue persists. your red light ladies and gentlemen we got them there you go so I told you there was a disc in here I could hear it so we got a NBA 2k 13 Executive produced by Jay-Z. 
Um, but yeah, I guess off stream, I'll probably deconstruct it um, just so that I can screw the board back down. I didn't think about that while I was screwing all that shit back in. But uh, we are $30 Model A PS3 is now back in action. We did it. So, hooray. Back off, let's try it again. There you go. And, uh, and that's that. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it. I'm gonna leave it here. I'm gonna kinda clean up my mess a little bit. Um, it is getting kinda late. My girlfriend, I pretty much ghosted her. So I'm gonna go hang out with her, but that's that. Um, obviously, I'm gonna put it back together. I'll probably do that in the morning when I wake up before work. So um, I'm really happy that I can show you guys kind of how to do it. It was ugly and I, my hot air station let me down a little bit, but we got it going. So we now have like, what, that's like her fourth Model A that's in my house. Oh goodness, where the fuck did this come from? Oh, this goes underneath this. That's okay. But all right, th I, man, I appreciate you guys. This is the first time I've ever done something like this. I've never really done like a streaming console work, um, that kind of thing. So I really appreciate you guys for hanging out. And um, yeah, it was it was neat. I'm, I'm, it went way better than expected, even though we had some even though we had some hiccups. But I'm gonna host you now, go spend some time with my girlfriend who ate, made me pizza roll. She's she's really just the best. Um, let me see who I can pawn you guys off on. It looks like Ellie is doing Dragon Warrior 3. Pete is doing Ace Combat. <laughs> He's always doing weird shit. Alrighty, so I'm gonna kick you guys over to Ellie. He's speed running Dragon Quest 4. Great game, great dude. Um, show him some love. Again, thank you guys. This is the first time I've ever done, you know, a hardware, a stream kind of thing like this. So I appreciate all the feedback and thank you guys for hanging out. Hopefully next time I'll be a little bit more uh, professional. But I will see you guys next time, probably Friday. I'll do a run or something. Maybe uh, maybe some other day this week. I don't know. But I will see you then. And until next time, guys, be well.